it is 5.30 and I'm calling this meeting to order. First, a reminder that meetings of the select board are meetings conducted in public. They are not meetings of the public. Nonetheless, members of the public shall be afforded reasonable opportunities to express opinions about matters conducted by the select board so long as order is maintained. The rules for public comment are, at the conclusion of a select board discussion on an agenda item, but before any action is taken, there may be 10 minutes afforded to public comment. Comments made by the public must be addressed to the chair or to the select board as a whole and not to any individual member of the select board or members of the public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they shall not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. <coughs> Order and decorum shall be maintained throughout the meeting. Personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks will not be tolerated. For those who are participating via Zoom, please note that chat is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. All public comments must be made verbally when acknowledged by the chair. Please silence all cell phones. A reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded and may appear on the internet. Okay, are there adjustments to the agenda? I have one. Uh, I want to strike executive session. We don't need it. Okay. Thank we, you. We like that. Okay. Um, any other adjustments to the agenda? Select board? Okay. Uh, can I hear a motion to approve the minutes of January 25th, 2023? Make a motion to approve the minutes of January 25th, 2023. Second? Second. Okay. Does anybody see anything that they would like to change? Anything? I have a question. Uh, yeah. Uh oh. Something, something. Um, I know I was supposed to share a statement from Mark for Martin Luther King Day, and I didn't, so that is not in there. Um. Um. That was the last oh. meeting, right? Yeah, that was in other business. That's true. Um, so, so can I can I email that to Karen right now, or is there a way to? Well, uh, right now I'm going to put in here that you shared a letter a statement. or a, st a statement from um, Mark Thurman, right? He wrote that? Yes. Um, yes. On um, MLK yeah. Day. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that change? Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any other changes to the minutes? No, but Swift, there's something super funky going on with your. Um, oh God, I'm so sorry. I'll make it go away. It's <laughs> <laughs> super annoying, and I have no idea. Supposedly, it's, it's not on the knee. It was some Zoom update thing, but I had to look into it. <laughs> well, it, it was. It's pretty, but it is distracting. <laughs> um, okay, so. Yes. Uh, okay, so hearing no other changes. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed. Okay, so we have done that. Um, I'm actually see. I'm going to take this off of the table. All right. Um, so, are there public comments on items not on the agenda? There's one. Public, anybody in the room? Um, anybody online? <clears throat> okay. I just wanted to uh, remind the select board that um, one of the reasons I read that blurb in the beginning is to remind us that this is in fact a meeting among us. Um, the public has a right to, to attend, they have a right to observe, they have a right to um, input uh, you know, comments, um, but we uh, don't necessarily have to respond to those um, and we can, move, we, can, we can move on if we want. So I just wanted everybody to, to remember that. Um, you know, if there's something that you really feel that you need to clarify or say, feel free to say it. Um, but we also um, have been going into two to three hours meetings. Um, so we just want to balance that with, um, <clears throat> with efficiency. Okay. I have a different, I, I realized I made a mistake and didn't, uh, that, that had to do with the minutes from oh. before. I'm just seeing something. <laughs> so what do we do with that? I think that is a great question. So I think that's the. Can we 
can go back. We can make a motion to re yeah. We can make a motion to reconsider the minutes. Okay, I make a motion to reconsider the minutes. Alrighty. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay. What's the? Okay. Change? I just think in uh, select board items new business number um, B that I did not agree to make to help work on a proposed resolution. I agreed to explore this issue, not necessarily create a resolution. Okay, so Peg Alden agreed to, to explore this concern. This concern. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody okay with that change? Yes. All right. Can okay. uh, hearing, I that's hearing no other, <laughs> does anybody have any other changes to the minutes? Sure. Uh, this is an observation, not yeah. a change. In 8A, okay. it states that I will help Vanessa and write a proposed resolution. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that I am going to write the resolution, or I'm going to work with Vanessa and she's going to write, or we're going to do it together? Vanessa, you and Vanessa are working together. We are. You are working together. Okay. To create a okay. resolution. That's yes. what we we've talked been, about we've been in, in the touch last, last, okay. last okay. meeting. So are you okay with this language or do you want to change it? No, this is fine. Okay. All right. Are there any other changes to the minutes? Okay, hearing none. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So that's okay. <laughs> All right, now moving back to public comments on items not on the agenda. Are there any further comments on the select board? Okay, moving on to um, <clears throat> warrants to the treasurer. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the warrants, to approve and execute the warrants to the treasurer as presented upon completion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the warrants, um, approve and ex execute the warrants upon completion of review. Karen. So, payroll warrant dated February 10th, 2023, in the amount of $22,291.65. Um, this is a larger payroll due to um, overtime with the highway department for the storms. Um, they had approximately 65 and a half hours of overtime. And the fire department too had um, substantial calls. Um, they had a total of like 282 and a half hours. Um, Were all those due to the storm? Yep. Okay. Yep. Calls. Um, so yeah, we had a approximately $2,095.92 in overtime dollars for the highway department. Okay. Um, and the fire department was, with the chief's salary, was uh, $6,734.78. And it's usually about you know, $2,800 to $3,200. So okay. the storms, they're out there quite a bit. Scanner was non-stop. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you for all the hard work. Yes. Definitely um, was noticed. Um, all right, does anybody else have anything on the payroll? And then we have accounts payable dated January 28th through February 10th, 2023, and the amount of 75000 Four hundred twenty-five dollars thirty-six cents. Um, there is a payment to M and T Bank, seventeen thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars twenty-two cents. That is the last payment for the Ram one-ton pickup. Yay! Yeah, and then um, so another one off the long-term debt. Yeah, I know. It's it's looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, and then Simon Operations, of course, is our wastewater treatment plant. Yep. And there's nothing else. Um, Wiley Brace is, um, he did, he helped with the landscaping out here oh. at Town Hall. Okay. And I think that's the only other unusual. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't see anything else that's late. All right. Anybody see anything? All right. Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Warrants pass. Time manager's report. I know, and I forgot to turn it off. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, so all I want to really say is that um, property taxes are due Friday, February 17th. 4.30, the town hall will close. Um, at this point, we still have, for the third payment, to collect $983,493. But total for the 22 tax year, we have $1,083,321.77 outstanding. And for delinquent taxes from 2011 through 2021, we have $79,007.11. So all you folks um, that need to come to the office for your third payment um, will be open all day tomorrow and then all next week. And we'll see what happens. Okay. But Is that relatively high, the uh, delinquent taxes? or? Well, I can say that we've received <coughs> all of the escrow payments. Okay. They came from, the from the bank. Wages. Okay. So that's guaranteed, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's like another 46000 that needs to be an input. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, they're in. It is high. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. That's good. <laughs> Five years I lost sleep. <laughs> not doing it no more. Doesn't help any. <laughs> no. So we'll see what happens. You know. Okay. Um, I will say that um, there are properties um, that are two years in arrears now. This will put them back another year, and. There, I am looking at a tax sale in Putney. And if folks haven't come to me for a payment plan, they'll be receiving nota notice from my office as the delinquent tax collector. Okay. Because they're more than two years out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And those typically happen in August? Well, I guess if I start my really procedure want. in March, Yeah which I can, I would like to have it done before we close the fiscal year okay. in 23. Okay. But I also have July and August to, like, mm -hmm. if we collect money, I can put it towards this fiscal year. Okay. Um, so it's unfortunate. Um, there are programs out there and if people qualified and if they applied, which we encourage people to do. So, um, usually when, when I put a tax sale out there or send letters, people come to me and they'll either pay. Um, I don't have too many payment plans right now. So. Okay. All right. So, yeah. That is the nature of the beast. And sometimes payment plans won't catch somebody up either. So it just, you know, compounds the problem. So on a good note, town reports <laughs> arrived to the office. Um, it looks like they may be sent out by tomorrow. So there's 722 going out in the mail. Nice. Yeah. And we have our copies here. Yeah. And we have, there's a sneak preview of the cover. I don't know if you can see that. So if you live downtown, you can pick out your house. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And town hall is right in the middle. It's right there. Of course. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> so Justin Altman, who lives in town, um, has a drone and he, that's his picture. Well, I like it. 
I think it's beautiful. Too. And you know, we're getting better at this, just so the board knows. And you know, the state will give a prize to the best town report. So ah. we're oh. working hard to like. Do we get something? Ice cream social or something? No, I think we get like a plaque. Or something. Oh. <laughs> Is it just like the cover? Is that all? Or are they assessing the entire report? No, I think they look at the entire thing. The entire report. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because we we're not. Well, I, I based on the cover alone, yep. I think we're in the running. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can't really remember what else was on my town, my town managers. Okay. We, we've been really busy here. I bet. Um, so a lot of grants going on, um, trying to organize and stay ahead of all of that. And um, the three workforces, I was on a Zoom call yesterday with BCRD and Mike Costco, and um, it appears like the last task force will have a chair or co-chair so that was being finalized um community develop community community center excuse me kitty iman is the chair and they have had one meeting already and revitalization of the downtown is lisa papazian and eric bass and i had a meeting with them as well and um so things are starting to happen. Mm -hmm. The timing is going to be critical. That's one thing I wanted to mention is Monday I was up in Wilmington for an ARPA meeting and they had a whole panel of um, state agencies up there. And the commissioner, deputy commissioner, um, Doug Farnham, is that his name? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the message I got from him is that Towns that have ARPA money, so we have to obligate by December 2024. His message is don't wait until December 2024. Mm -hmm. So we need to be proactive and have projects. And if we're going to leverage money, we need to know what that project is. And I spoke to a grant writer today too, and um, same thing. So very excited about what we're doing here in Putney, and um, but you need to be looking at you know a specific project that way you can leverage the funds from different organizations. Okay. Um, on your agenda, you're going to see there is you know better connections grant that um, yeah, I can see that transpired you know. I'll talk about it later, but um, so a lot going on and timing is going to be critical. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm excited. I think there's a lot of good work happening right now in Putney and um, I want to see it continue, but our focus and our priority needs to be funding and leveraging any funds that we have. Pretty much, right, Jenna? Okay. okay. All, right. All right. So I think that's about it. Okay. All right. I'll have more next meeting. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's, there's, there, I'm sure there's a lot going on. Does anybody from the board have any questions about the town report? I mean, the town report. The town manager's report. Yep. Uh, is there, are there any questions online for Karen? Okay. Anybody in the room? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to Boards, Committees, Commissions, Equity and Inclusion Advisory Committee Statement. I assume that's you, Swift. It is me. Um, I am going to hope that I don't turn into it. No, I'm a dance party. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to talk. I'm sorry. You can't see me. Sorry. So, um, so Nate wrote um, our statement, the equity inclusion statement for Black History Month, and he is doing emergency responder training tonight. Um, right. So he cannot be here. So these are his words as a black man in our community. Um, black History Month 2023. February is Black History Month here in Vermont. We don't have a large population or diversity, but we are still capable of celebrating and honoring the tra trailblazers of the black community. Vermont was the 14th state in the union to join in uh, 
1791, and in 1777, Vermont became the first colony to outlaw slavery and give African American males, at least, the right to vote, even before Vermont joined the Union in 1791. A former slave named Jeffrey Brace, uh, Boyron Du Brinch, I think might be an alternative name for him, um, moved to Pulteney. Jeffrey was taken from West Africa as a teenager, fought for the British in the French and Indian War, and then fought against the British in the American Revolution. So just to share, we have a long history of African Americans and Vermont. Uh, Southern Vermont has resources for the BIPOC population. Susu Community Farm is a nonprofit organization dedicated to enriching the earth and people of color. The Root Social Justice Center is also a BIPOC-led nonprofit organization and the root focuses on community advocacy and relationship building through programming actions and local initiatives susu and the root social justice center are located in brattleboro and have sites and hold events regularly last year co-chairs mike mark thurman and swift everty ended uh the black history month statement with take this month for reflection learning and action keep an open mind open a book watch a documentary donate your time or money Come together and remember change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. Educating and improving our community's resources is extremely critical in fighting for equality in all forms, race, gender, class. Vermont has very low diversity, and with that comes unintentional ignorance, and ignorance that causes more issues towards the fight for equity. As a person of color, this is Nate speaking, um, that has lived in the community my entire life, I still encounter racism in all forms. And my most recent experience was at an event in town. A person sitting behind me started to pet my hair. They apologized a couple minutes later by saying that it reminded her of her dog in the best way, in all the best ways. Her intention wasn't bad, but the invasion of personal space and how they equated me to their dog is offensive. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. Just Stephen Hawking. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. Best wishes, Nate Snell, member of the Equity Inclusion Committee, and um, Eleni Masakuli, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Eleni from the diner also helped him, and she is a prospective member um, of the Equity Committee. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, I wanted to share two resources of some events that are happening. Um, the first is um, at the library on the Brattleboro Library on sorry um, February fifteenth, um, and it is a, a local poet, poet and author, um, Jelly Portia, um or Willem Portian, also known as Jelly. Uh, he's going to be reading poetry uh, from his book called "The Day After Juneteenth." and um, leading a discussion on black history and where we are today. And that is at 7 p.m. at the Brooks Memorial Library on February 15th. Um, there's also a really great resource for um, that comes from the state that is daily um, either an invitation or a book or a article um, that is from the Vermont Human Rights Council, um, and I can share that resource with Karen if people are interested in signing up for that. You just send, give them your email, and then they send you a daily um, little prompt or a little article or a little piece of education um, every day for the month of February. So I'll share that with, with Karen so she can have that if people are interested. Um, it's really, really kind of just, they're quick and they're short and it's accessible and it just pops into your inbox. Um, so thank you so much for the time. All right, thank you, Swift, and thank you, uh, Nate and uh, Eleni, for that statement. It was well said. Um, is there public comment online? Is there anything further from the select board? No, oh, just thank you. Um, okay, um, moving on to uh, select board items, new business to the library board of trustees report to the select board, which is Janice. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. I have two things I want to um, speak about tonight. The first is kind of courtesy. I just want to inform the select board that um, the Putney Library Board of Trustees has approved Trish Roberts and Ben Lord to fill the vacant positions on the board. And I will present these candidates for approval at town meeting. 
I know you really stress the time. If you'd like, I can give, tell you a little bit about each of the candidates or we can move on. Oh, uh, certainly. Let's hear about them. Okay, great. Because we're really excited about those two young people. Um, Ben uh, will take up a three-year seat, and Trish will uh, complete the one year remaining on the seat vacated by Emily Moore, who had to step down for family reasons. Ben's a science teacher. Some of you may know him. He's now actually a science coach for the whole Wyndham Southeast Advisory Union. He's also a science writer. He especially, Ben told me when I asked him about, and I should say, anybody who's on the board is passionate about the library. He is an avid library user, as is his family. But he told me he especially wants to listen deeply to the community members to discern how the library can best serve them. And he also wants to help us build a library of things, um, which you've probably heard about. Trish is passionate about nature and would like to use her background in literature and theater to bring all these elements together for creative programming. She also brings a very strong commitment to finding ways to foster intergenerational communication, which the library is very committed to as well. Recently, recently, Trish worked with the youth librarian and other homeschooling parents to offer some guidance and resources in how parents who aren't used to homeschooling their children or doing hybrid education, how they offer tips to help them and resources. And I listened to part of it and it was just great. It was so useful. I hope people were able to take advantage of it. Um, She's also piloting an art and um, nature program at Main Street Arts right now. Um, so the, the board is really excited and thrilled to be able to welcome these two um, very able and committed young people to the library board. The other thing I wanted to talk about briefly was our, our garden, as everybody knows, and some people complain, and we had to remove our two trees because they were dying. Um, it was very sad. They were 100, 150 years old. So the library board, we formed a subcommittee to look into what we would do with the gardens and um, how we would go about the process of de redesigning the gardens. Um, the very first thing I want to announce is that Gordon Hayward has enthusiastically offered to uh, work with us to redesign the gardens. We anticipate that this will be a multi-year project. Um, the the um, board will finance the gardens and may need to do some additional fundraising. We're not sure about that yet because we don't know what the design is going to be. Um, both Gordon and I have spoken with Karen um, about where we are in this and have committed to keep the board, um, Karen select board apprised of, of where we are and, and sketches and certainly the, before we finalize any design, we would bring it to the select board as well. Um, there's a lot of questions that come up, and I've been really, you know, not even understandably, but so impressed with Gor with Gordon's knowledge, and he just knows all the questions to ask um, in terms of things that the uh, town will be concerned about. He even had us take pictures of the snow banks to see how far in the snow blower blew the snow. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we had a nice big storm, so we could do that. Um, this is, you know, pretty exciting, and I think everyone in the town will be excited, and fits really well in with um, the commitment of the town to revitalize downtown. Um, and so, yeah, that's my good news. Two good news is from the library. All right, nice. Does anybody have any comments on that? Um, I, 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 those two candidates sound really. Great. I happen to know Ben a little bit because his uh -huh. daughter goes um, is friends with my daughter, um, and um, he's he's a fantastic listener and he's a fantastic speaker. And um, I, I'm I'm glad that he's found the time to join the library trustees. You too. It's very hard to find young people who are willing, who are actually able to commit the time <laughs> to even a committee like the library. Yep. I can see he's going to bring a lot of energy. Definitely. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, there's questions online. Mr. Fairman? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have two questions for the previous speaker. The first one is, uh, 
You referred to Gordon regarding the garden. Were you referring to Gordon Hayward of Westminster, who was the famed landscape architect? Yes, I'm sorry. I thought I said Gordon Hayward. Yes, the renowned Gordon Hayward from Westminster. Okay. Thank you. Now, it's possible I missed it, but I just thought I'd clarify that. The other question is, yes, the trees had to be cut down. Why not plant replacement trees? So we're not, one of the reasons is because of the age of the trees and the depth of the roots of the trees. The trees are 100, 150 years old. The roots are extremely deep. We're waiting to hear back from Renault to find out how deep they went down and how far the roots have extended. But what's there will certainly influence the kind of design that we have. And we also want to react to, it's an opportunity to rethink the entrance to the library as well. But certainly we have not, we will, there will be trees, certainly on the left, on the south side. But whether they're going to be able to be 150 year old maples, I don't know. It depends what's underground, actually. And you might know that there are water, there's water pipes along there too. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're attempting to plant a tree that could live for 100 years. Does that answer your question? Mr. Farron? Madam Chair, the speaker answered my question in part. I would simply note that, yes, a replacement tree could eventually live to be 150 years old, though long may it do so. But the existing trees, to my knowledge, certainly from what has been said publicly, did not actually cause any problem with water pipes or anything else until they reached an advanced age when, yes, they could have fallen someplace, which could have been on the building, and that would, of course, not have been good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other public comment or questions? Anything on the select board? Anything in the room? Janice, are you satisfied? All right. Yeah, you know, the design isn't, you know, we're really in the early stages of talking about the concept here. I'm just passing on information that I've been given. I'm pretty sure that we're not just going to replace, you know, the two big trees, that we're going to have a more welcoming and inviting space there. But we are, there are constraints when you're planting large trees in a downtown community, and we need to be aware of those. Right. I suspect those trees were there and we built around them rather than the other way around. Yes, we did. Yeah. All right. Is there any other public comment? Okay. Moving on to the annual certificate of highway mileage review and approval. So in your packet, this is our annual certificate of highway mileage, and there are no changes. So we haven't added any new roads or, you know, taken any off. So these numbers have not changed. The second document shows you the payments that we'll receive. So Eileen, you had mentioned too that in our budget, remember, you had seen $140,000 in the highway budget, and you had asked me why I reduced it. It's because of this. Because we get quarterly payments. Okay. And I can tell you that they're roughly, you know, $36,000, you know. Okay. That's a good reason. That's a good reason. Yeah. And then also in your packet, it does state, you know, class one, class two, and class three, how many miles. And it gives you actually the rate, okay? And I also put for supporting documentation any state statutes that were referenced in the certificate of highway mileage. If you... If you'd like to read it. Right. So those select board notebooks, 
if, if you got more than a one-year term, you might want to put it in there. This comes up change. every year. <laughs> um, yeah, we do this annually, right? And, annually, um, yes. We so, do. and this is basically us agreeing with the state that this is the amount of mileage that we have, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and so all the signatures are going to be on the bottom. You can barely see it. Oh names, boy! But yep. um, okay. I had to leave room for you to at least write me. <laughs> okay. um, or sign it, okay? Yep. Um, but I do recommend signing this, otherwise we would not um, see funding. Okay. And this is to maintain our roads. Right. Okay, so we need a motion on this. <coughs> so anybody want to make a motion? We'll make a motion to accept the annual certificate of highway mileage. Second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to accept the certificate of highway mileage for uh, the year ending February 10, 2023. Is there further discussion among the board? Are there any comments online regarding the certificate of highway mileage? Anything in the room? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so we can sign that. Uh, moving on to the Rescue Inc. Town Consortium meeting memo from Chief Goddard. So in your packet, which I should have given you in the last meeting, but <coughs> got left on my desk. So January 18th, Chief Goddard went to the um, meeting for rescue. Um, this is his, I asked for a memo, just so we are in the know about what might be changing in the future, if anything. Um, so I didn't really see anything um, alarming in here. Um, he did state overall the meeting was very positive. Um, we currently have a three-year contract with them. So if anything is going to change, I would suspect that we would see it sooner than later. So that is something I will have to keep my eye open for. So, there's no action here. We're just, this is basically a updating this is just us informational. On, on what went on at the meeting. Right. Okay. Because only because of the changes that have happened. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want any surprises. So, I think we'll just yeah. monitor this as it develops. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't have any further comments. Do you have a copy of this? Don't we know. don't. Yeah. All right. This is the one we should sign. Okay. In those minutes, we're going to need to change, so I don't know. And you could sign them, but you might have to sign them again. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Um, yes. So, is there any com uh, discussion on the select board regarding the memo? Okay, are there any comments online? Anything in the room? All right, moving on to the local alternative, um, local alternatives, Putney Landing Sidewalk Feasibility Study Public Hearing Notice. All right, so there is a public hearing on this um, Putney Landing um, alternatives on Monday night, February 14th here at Town Hall starting at 6 p.m. Monday is not the 14th. No, that's 13th. true, it's the 13th. Oh, you said, say I thought you said 14th, sorry. It's okay. The warning, I mean, the, this agenda says 13th, so. Yes. It is Monday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. So here's, I just want to, just so this board knows, the Planning Commission has a grant for the Sidewalk Feasibility Study for Putney Landing. So sidewalk, alternatives have been designed everything's on our website and um, I can't remember if I emailed you, you all did. the link I did, yeah, you did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. so we just got the cost for each alternative today so that's on the website as well so just because the planning commission is spearheading this this board will make the ultimate decision mm -hmm. so it is very important that um, the select board or a majority, a quorum, be at the meeting on Monday. 
Okay. It's not certain that the planning commission will have a quorum. Okay. So, do they need a quorum as well, or are they just they're not doing any decisions? This is they're not making any decisions, but Pip is going to be there. It's and their meeting. Are yeah. we expected to make a decision on Monday? That was my question too. Um. I wouldn't touch that off. I don't see this board making a decision on Monday, okay. but the grant deadline is in July. So we will have to have an alternative to move the process forward to meet that um, grant deadline. We may be able to get an extension. I'll talk to Pip more about it, but um, okay. Pip definitely will be there. Karen, yeah. I don't know what you mean by an alternative to move it forward. Wait, so there, we have to choose an alternative. Oh, There's we have to make a choice. One of, yes. one of, one of yes. the yes. options. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, you know, public yeah. engagement and public input is very important. Right. And I have emailed certain people in the village, and I've um, emailed Windham, Windsor Housing Trust. Um, they're going to get notices posted, and I'm trying to reach out to the Tufts because it's important for them to be at this meeting as well. Okay. Um, because one of the alternatives is Goes. across Goes. their property. Okay. Um, and have they have they voiced a willingness to accept a right of way there, or I mean, does it involve a right of way or not? It will. Yes. Um, and do we have they expressed a willingness? Do you have any idea? I, I, I have no idea yeah. at this point. I know when I went for the site visit with Pep and the state and the engineer um, in the fall, um, you know, there was a path that, in that location, but it was blocked. So at that point, we we anticipate you know we're going to have to sit down and talk with them and they should be at the table honestly yeah okay to discuss options um, um <clears throat> so i think the question at the moment is how many of us are available on that monday i can make an effort to zoom in i don't know that i could be there in person um so it's, that's one. It's here, Karen. Yeah, Sorry. you can um, zoom in, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in here. I thought it was somewhere else. It's at the it's town the hall. Is no, it so at the town hall? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I, I believe that I'm, I think I responded that I could come. So. Okay, so that's two. We need one more. Um, I, I can probably come, but if, but my term is up pretty soon, so if that means I can't be helpful down the road, but I don't know whether that matters. I guess you'd be helpful in that you're forming a quorum at, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. still an active Yeah, thing. no, I, I know, know. So but I if it's gonna involve a decision that's a month from now, then. I think you've got a lot of knowledge about other sidewalks as well, so I think. I think I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, I think you're gonna be, you can. You're gonna be um, important to have at the meeting. That's fine, you might wanna text me or something. <laughs> Just, just <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah. So Monday the 13th at 6 o'clock. That's the here. Yes. I'll be here. Okay. So we have at least three. Okay. And I'm going to push for the planning commission to at least have a quorum. Yeah. Because there's, there's really no... Well, so their, their concern is they'll have a meeting on Monday, but they also have a meeting on Tuesday. I see. Yeah, but, so it's heavy on there. Well, it, it is what it is. I mean... Right. They rescheduled last night's meeting to next week, so they just happen to be back to back. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really anticipate, you know, unless there's a large group. Typically, there aren't a lot. There isn't much right. turnout at something um, like this, but that, there were a few people who were at that first meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was not yeah. very didn't have a lot of content to it. Right. Um, so yeah, okay. I would imagine those same people would want to show up to this one. Right. And I'm sure the engineer will zoom in as well. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. Uh, is there further discussion on the board? Uh, public comment online, Mr. Fairman. Madam Chair, first, uh, as a Putney Landing resident, I can tell you that Lyndon and Windsor Housing Trust, a couple of days ago, sent an email to everyone who lives here, 
uh, letting us know about this public hearing and saying they hope that we will attend, uh, which I plan to do. Uh, I am writing a detailed critique of the proposal, which I shall send to our town manager Friday for uh, distribution to uh, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other uh, public comment online? Anything in the room? Any more discussion on the board? Actually, I, I do have a question. So what do you see as the, the steps in the process here? Like, um, are, are, are we, isn't there a requirement to have a certain number of um, meetings. meetings? We've had one already in January. Right. Um, this will be the second one. Right. And then um, once we come up with an option, she can, um, the engineer can finish the study. The study. Yeah, because we, she can't move ahead right. without like a specific alternative sidewalk plan. But then, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing it would then go to to agency of transportation for their. Yes, they would. Because they 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 don't right. let us do anything right. without thoroughly vetting it. So. And actually, um, I'll have to check my email and make sure, because I have the contact for the state, and I actually should just invite them to be at the meeting. Mm -hmm. That way we don't have to redo it. So are you saying, I just want to understand the process that the, the design has to, I mean, we have to make a decision about which direction we want to go. The design has to be done then it has to go to the state and that all of that has to be done before this grant application or whatever the grant process is at the end of July yes okay so all of those things need to be done right. in order to, pro to put the grant proposal in to complete the project right so we're paying the engineer uh -huh. through the grant so all that time is being built to us right now Oh, and oh, then, oh. But, this, but it's this grant that closes in July. We have right. to have the engineering process completed. To so, for but, a whole other phase of but the project. Right. Right. Exactly. Agency right. of Transportation. Yep. And then once you've done that, it's got to go out to... I mean, okay. Agency of okay. Transportation has to approve it. Right. And, and then it's then got to go out to out. bid. And okay. then it's got... I mean... Yes. Great, great. You know, that's yeah. super helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just the feasibility okay. piece of it. And then we'll have to look at the costs and then see if we can get a grant and then it, it, there'll be a, a second phase. Okay, so the first grant is just to pay for the work we've already done. <laughs> or, or the, yeah, or the process of doing it. Get reimbursement right. for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Are there, is there further discussion or questions on the board? Any questions or comments online? Anybody in the room? All right, moving on to uh, the Better Connections Grant Opportunity Overview. Karen. Oh, that would be me. That's you. So in your packet is yet another grant. Um, so the work, the task force for revitalization, revitalizing the downtown has um, VCRD approached them with this opportunity for a grant. It's due February 17th, which is <laughs> next, next week. week on Friday. And we are so far behind the eight ball on this, but we're optimistic that we can pull it together with the help of Wyndham Regional Commission. So Lisa Papazian, Eric Bass, and I are gonna work together to try to accomplish that. This grant actually is, um, up to ninety-seven thousand dollars. I think it might have been ninety-seven thousand five hundred. And what the task force is looking to do is do like a master streetscape. Mm -hmm. So like traffic calming, um, sidewalks, and um, other things for the village. Um, there's also like a clean water fund associated with this grant too for another thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's basically like um, stormwater runoff, mm -hmm. you know, for like rain gardens and stuff like that. Um, we're not certain that we're gonna 
go after that piece. But um, this grant only comes out biannually. So it's out now. It came out in December. And like I said, we're late on the drawer on this one. But um, we're going to try to um, fill it out and submit it. Um, so that second piece that you were talking about, the, the, the clean water fund, um, does that yeah. also have a deadline of February 17th? Yes. Okay. So we, so can, we can do both at the same time. Um, okay. So what I'm asking for from the board is we need a resolution for Better Connections grant. Okay. What it requires is the signature of the Planning Commission Chair which needs to go in front of the Planning Commission for, the, for their vote and approval and then for the legislative body to sign off on. Uh, okay. So, so, so that could happen at that meeting on Monday. It could happen on Monday. Or Tuesday. Yeah. It could, as, it could happen as late as Tuesday. Right. Um, what I'd like to do, and I'm trying to be transparent with this process, we should get the Planning Commission to sign off on it first and then have the Select Board sign it. Um, but, uh, I mean, so I'm happy to make a motion that we approve the Resolution for Better Connections grant mm -hmm. uh, it, it contingent upon the approval of the Planning Commission. Uh, that works we, perfectly. Okay, me. and do we... You have, we have it. You have it. Where is that? I can read... It's right after the... It's right at the first just before that, two pages back. Um, ah, okay. So, I so, mean, I can read that. Yeah, why don't we read it? Um, so the resolution, resolution reads, whereas the municipality of Putney, Vermont is applying for funding as provided for in the FY23-24 budget and may receive an award of funds under said provisions, and whereas the Agency of Transportation and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development may offer a grant agreement to this municipality for said funding and whereas the municipality is maintaining its efforts to provide local funds for planning purposes or the municipality has voted at an annual or special meeting to provide local funds for planning purposes. Now therefore will it be resolved that the legislative body of this municipality enters into and agrees to, to the requirements and obligations of this grant program, including a commitment to provide a cash match of 10% of the project cost, that the Municipal Planning Commission recommends applying for said grant, and it has a blank space for the Planning Commission Chair, and that uh, blank space is hereby designated as the local project manager, the person with the overall administrative responsibility for the better grant for the Better Connections program activities related to the application and any subsequent grant agreement provisions. That would presumably be Karen. Okay. Um, and then there's just instructions Sorry. for resolution form and signature lines. So do we meet those first three, or is, is applying for funding as provided? Third one. Receive in a way. Yes, where's the municipality? Provide local funds for planning purposes. I mean, we have a planning commission that doesn't that qualify us? Which one are you? The third, the third whereas the municipality is maintaining its efforts to provide local funds for planning purposes. Oh, I see. Or the municipality oh. has voted at an annual or special meeting to provide local funds for planning purposes. I think that's true, right? We, we, yes, we have we to have, have a ten percent match. We have done that. Yes. So. But this is also, I, I mean, from my perspective, this is a place if we needed to. That match could come out of ARPA funding, presumably. That's correct. Uh, okay. So. Okay, so you were about. So I moved it. So I moved to approve the resolution for a better connections grant. Um, contingent on. Contingent upon um, the municipal planning commission recommending applying for said grant. Okay, and do we have to name Karen as well? And that we would um, name Karen Astley as the designated local project manager. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution for better connections grant contingent on a vote 
by the Planning Commission um, and to authorize Karen to be the uh, local project local manager. project manager. Did I get that right? Uh, is there is there further discussion among the board? Yeah, I need more clarity. I, I need. I'm. I'm. Can Can you explain, Karen, the how we meet the criteria for the third whereas again? So we have to have a ten percent match. Yep, yeah, that's the first point. That's the first. Therefore, the third whereas. <laughs> The third whereas. So maintaining, providing local funds for planning. Per right. It's so maintaining its efforts to provide local funds for planning purposes. Okay. So right. I would say that we are because we're funding the planning commission. In, we fund right. planning commission grants all the time. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And then now to the first, therefore, the 10%. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just t tell me again what the range for the grant could be. So how much are we looking at? Ten percent there. Oh, how much are we? Up yeah. to ninety-seven thousand. Are, are we saying yeah, so we will? So ten percent of ninety-seven thousand plus plus thirty, possibly on in on top of that. You said for the water yeah, for the clean water. So a, a total of thirteen thousand. Okay, so basically we're saying here that we are going to match $13,000 for something that we have no idea what it is, right? We don't know yet what... The project? Yeah. Right. Right. Correct. Um, okay. That is true. <laughs> Want to be clear. Um, That's true. Want to be clear. <laughs> so, and, 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 and just for historical perspective on that we do this often I mean it, essentially we can't um, apply for this grant without agreeing to do that right we don't even know whether we would get the grant so right. we don't know whether we would be responsible for that we probably if we really wanted to and they offered us the grant and we chose decided we didn't want to do the 10% we could probably decline it I wouldn't recommend that, but we definitely do. This is a this is a common procedure that you agree to a match without knowing whether you're going to get the grant no, no, and or necessarily know, what it right I, and or I necessarily exactly what it we'll get will be. Match. Right. The thing that is more confusing is that we don't even know what it is. Well, if you look at the program objectives, though, two pages after that. Yeah, I, I did, but it doesn't tell me. I mean, it. Well, you're providing a. I'm not trying to. I'm, I'm just trying to simplify. Right, you know, right, provide know. a safe, multimodal, resilient transportation system. So <laughs> there's your explanation. There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing about transportation systems. Can I just read a, a short description that Lisa Papadopoulos said? Yes, sent that in. might help. <laughs> um, so this was the Better Place pre-flight form that was submitted. So. Please provide a short description of your project. A new downtown revitalization task force has formed to advance efforts to improve Putney's streetscape, including sidewalks, wayfinding, signage, parks, visual appearance of downtown, underused properties, parking, and transportation infrastructure, as well as to support local businesses with marketing and other planning. A streetscape slash revitalization master plan has been identified as a key first step to help inform a coordinated and cohesive approach to this work. Okay. You you were at the the Not that our future but right, but at the at the end this yeah, was yeah, yeah. one yeah. of the things okay. that came up. No, I'm getting it. I yeah. just wanted to be clear I just want to be clear and I wasn't quite clear yet. Do you um, want to know what the project goals and expected outcomes that are? That we say they are? That Lisa says? Yes. Yeah, that would be helpful. So the goals for the project are to provide an inventory of existing conditions, assets, and needs, and provide recommendations for efforts to address needs and advance revitalization efforts. For, furthermore, the plan would provide priority, prioritization guidance to um, for implementing improvements and recommendations for further planning and resources needed to achieve the identified goals. In general, 
The goals for revitalization include supporting existing businesses and nonprofits, welcoming new businesses and residents, and enhancing the appearance and functionality of downtown for all as a sustainable, energized village center. Cool. Sounds. It has my support. Okay. Sounds. Yes. It I'm sounds like. I had that. So, yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Elaine, I have a question. Yes. Oh, yes to Josh. This and this matching uh, amount. If it came out of ARPA money, would that be considered an emergency um, expenditure under that $150,000 that we set aside by virtue of the fact that this, seemed, this is time sensitive? Well, I mean, we, well, that, that money that we set aside isn't necessarily for emergencies. We, we set it aside so that we had it available for purposes that we chose to use it for. If there's an emergency, great. Or not great, but if there's an emergency, <laughs> great, that we, great that we have the money. Uh, but I, I certainly think this could come out of there. I mean, it probably time-wise, it depends a little bit on the timeline of the ARPA committee right. because if they're if right. depending on when this came up. But this is let's see, program announcement, application deadline. I mean, Fine. project started June nineteenth, twenty twenty-three. So. I'm not sure it would need to come out of there, but it, but that money is available for this kind of thing. If we, you know, if we need thirteen thousand dollars from it, mm -hmm. then we have That's it. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. it was so. not exclusive to emergencies. No, no. Well, we said we stated, I believe, uh, emergencies or time leave. What did we say? You know, we said something about have it here. time sensitive. Yeah, yeah, you have it right there. We have it right here. So yeah. it says. Be it further resolved that the select board shall set aside $150,000 of the ARPA funds for timely, urgent, or otherwise necessary expenditures. There we go. Yeah. yeah, I remember we accurately vague and exactly. useful. <laughs> <laughs> Define necessary. Yeah. So um, yeah. So um, so I think we're good there. Um, did you have no, any I other just questions? Clarification. Any other discussions among the board? Are there comments online or questions on this grant opportunity? The only th other thing I would say, just as a comment for that, that also, I mean, the, that money that we talked about previously, the unassigned funds to the tune of 130-ish thousand dollars, that's the, I mean, often grant monies are one of those things and matches are one of those things that we often have to just come up with money for it. And so the fact that we have that money sitting there, ideally we don't use it for a match if we can find another place for it to come from, but it's there, it's available if we need it for that kind of thing. We've definitely done that. One of the things that we're often able to do, which you're probably familiar with, is we're often able to meet matches with what's called in kind. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the, the highway department does work, or you know, somehow Karen does administrative work, right. et cetera, et cetera, and that offsets that amount. And I would imagine in this case, if you were the administrator, there might be administrative offset in that included yes. in that. So it might yeah. decrease that amount that we would have. So it doesn't have to be in cash? Well, it has to be, no, it doesn't, typically not. Uh, I mean, that they, they specify that, I would assume almost all of them you can do in kind. But the most important thing is that it has to be paid in a timely fashion. I mean, right. essentially, you, in order to close a grant and therefore get reimbursed for it, our portion has to have been paid up. Otherwise, we are not eligible to receive the rest. So there is a timeliness yeah. aspect yes. to it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there further discussion on the board? No. Any comments online? Any comments in the room? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. So you'll get that in front of the Planning Commission and then we can just come in and sign it after that, right? That's sure. how that'll work. Okay, okay so <coughs> select board on just finished. Wonder, when do we have to come in and sign it by? Just oh well so if it's due next Friday. So it would be like yeah, before. So we would want it like so my plan is 
if I have a quorum of planning commission on Monday, yeah. you, you can all just sign it then, whoever is in the room, but no later than Tuesday. Okay, I just have to know if I have to come in. Right. Karen will let you know. Yeah. Okay. Very important yeah. paperwork right okay. here. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure somebody. Um, it's all about the money. Yes. <laughs> well, and this is this is definitely exactly what we've been talking about. Yeah. Is right. that there's right. a huge amount of money out there, mm -hmm. and so the more we can stay ahead of this stuff, and you know those those grant matches are always a little bit, you know, there are questions. It's always great when we can do in kind because then it's not money out of pocket, but. You know, to be able to leverage one hundred and thirty thousand dollars with a ten percent match, yeah. we're crazy not to do that if we right. can, because right. we just come so far out ahead, yeah. and that's yeah. we yeah. just we get huge amounts of money that way over time. It really adds up. Yes. So, but this Karen's going to be doing a lot of this in the next couple of years. <laughs> with your grant person, there's somebody yeah. healthy, right? Help, oh, yes, yes. With, with help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are, right. these, are Can, these opportunities offered to all towns in the state? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, it, it, a, it might be a competitive grant. And, and, it is. And there are sometimes, depending on the grant, I mean, this one I would imagine is available, but sometimes there are certain criteria. And also there are timelines. If you, you know, like when we get state funding for certain things like replacing a culvert or something, we can only do that every X number of years because you're only eligible X number right. of years. Right. So it, there, it's sort of a rotational process. But yeah, the vast majority are competitive and somebody's gonna get that money. So yeah. if we can get it, great. And we have the capability and we have the folks that are wanting to do this too. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, some towns are not as fortunate as funny. Yeah. They don't have the staffing or, you know, the volunteers, the volunteers to go yeah. after this. So I'm very thankful for folks that are willing to do the work and because it helps a lot. Yeah, and it also, you know, landed right on the top of the task force getting formed. So this Correct. is kind of perfect timing Correct. for yeah. us. The timing yeah. is critical yeah. on yeah. everything yeah. for the next year. But, but again, I may be repeating myself, but you know, being able to use ARPA funding to leverage stuff like this, that's how we're going to optimize our ARPA money. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think of, even if we only use 10% of the ARPA money as matching funds for things that are 10%, that's an additional $750,000 that we come up with just because we, will, we were able to leverage it. I, I'll bet we can do a whole lot better that, than that if we're smart about it. So. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah. All right. So moving on to Select Board Unfinished Business, we have DB Fiber answers to follow-up questions, which is CORE. And is CORE still here? Tom, I think Sorry, skip. Did we skipped. Are we not doing the ARPA committee goals? Did we not vote on this? Yeah. Oh. I yeah, am I so sorry. So. We moved and seconded it. We moved and seconded it, and I didn't get there. Okay. Are you sure? Um, so, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, I'll have to go back and look at the, <laughs> the recording, whether we voted or not. Anyway, now we have. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Twice. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> at least. It's Maybe. Okay. Vote often. And 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we're going to move to DV fiber answers but to why, follow up. But what about F, ARPA. the ARPA committee? That's what oh I was. Oh my gosh! Uh, I am so sorry. I put. I believe you did vote. vote. I think you. I we did vote. I put a yes, check mark on that one because I was like, we didn't vote. So all right, backing so, up. Maybe we did. <laughs> to ARPA committee goals, which is Peg and myself. Peg, do you want to start oh. off? All my interest in this. Oh shoot! I don't. I, oh no, you don't have it. I don't have it. What, what do you need? It's in your packet. Uh, the resolution. No, no, I have the resolution, no. but I don't have my notes that say that. Just the language that I wanted to change. Oh, it was one word, right? It, yeah, it's just well, you a super to, simple. I you want wanted to strike surveys. You yeah, to I want to strike. Um, um, I couldn't find it. Oh, here, a number six on page two, um, underneath the, you know, whereas, you know, keeping this select board appraised, number six, carry out community engagement 
and stakeholder outreach to invite and collect surveys and applications from the public. Right. I would like to change the wording on that to uh, carry out community engagement and stakeholder outreach to invite applications from the public and strike out the and collect surveys and. Uh, okay. And my, my rationale for that is um, uh, because it says that the select board expects ARPA to collect surveys and and the ARPA committee is a little stuck in a circle of mm -hmm. thinking that that's a really important thing to do and I don't think that it I don't think it's necessary we, I don't think that's what we're asking them to do so I just you don't think that's what the select board was asking yes okay yeah okay yes um does anybody have any discussions on that I, I would say, I, I mean, I, I fully get the intent of what you're doing. I don't think it's necessary for us to amend this as presented, just because you're a committee that's been appointed by the select board. As long as everything's in good faith, I, I mean, that would that would be my opinion. And I, I think that we suffer from um, the perfect sabotaging the good yeah. at, on committees. And that's a mistake, and I think I, I just think it's important to say that in public that these J Jeanette may disagree with me, but no, these I, are my mouth is open. They, these are these are you know this isn't statute. Right. This is what we're asking a committee to do. We understand they're volunteer committees, and that they're as long as they're doing the best. I mean, if you guys were saying. We are not doing surveys because that is the worst thing in the world and we would get all this information that would convince us not to use this money the way we think we should, then I would say you got a problem, we should change that. But if you guys are saying, you know, we're not sure we can do surveys because it's too much cumbersome and we have, I don't, I think revisiting resolutions for things like this is beating a dead horse that you don't need to. And I'm not saying that I won't vote for it if we decide we want to. I personally don't think it's that important. But. Okay. Being on the committee, I would like to say that I think it would be helpful to the committee to have that cl have clarity on this issue. And that's all I'm, I'm asking for is, and anyways, it, it, to me, it, I mean, I agree with you 100%. But we seem to there that we seem to be stuck on that one, and I just want to um, get it get clear that that's not what we're asking. Well, um, when when yeah. Peg, go ahead, and then and then was, Jeanette's gonna needs to talk. Go ahead. Okay, when, <laughs> when ahead. this was discussed at your uh, ARPA committee meeting, was the term surveys defined? I mean, what do people understand surveys to mean? If they, in other words, if you want to take it out of here, is it something that's burdensome or? Yeah, it's. <laughs> let, I'll let Jeanette. Speak. Okay. Uh, Seems Jeanette. to have that potential. Uh, yeah. 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 Jeanette, no. would, would you like to? So, if I can just put this in a little bit of a context, is that okay? Yes. So we we got started, and I'll take some responsibility for this as the chair. We got started, then we put it on pause for the BCRD. Um, process to go through so that we could use that information that was gleaned from that process. As it turns out, there, um, which I think we are just finding out now that we're getting going more, there is a lot of misunderstanding. First, there was a lot of misunderstanding about, and, and I don't know why exactly, because it's pretty clear here that we're supposed to prioritize proposals and give them to you. But there were some on the committee who felt that what we were supposed to do is define a process, give you the process, and let you figure it out. So there was. So we're we're going back a long way here to try and def redefine what this committee is all about. I think that pegs. We have had um, huge debates and discussions and circle. Uh, conversations about a couple things in here. It, the um, on number four on the uh, 
resolution. Well, first of all, the the be it further resolved on the first page is really where you're telling us what the purpose is. And then the, the be it further resolved adds some a little more detail. And that's where we get into the into the trouble. So on number four, it says develop a solicitation and selection process. And then the carry out and collect surveys and applications from the public. So the committee's question is, did you really mean a survey? That people are taking it very literally. A survey means mm -hmm. <laughs> sending something out and having people check on it and then sending it back. That, so that's a very literal interpretation, the way it's written here. Uh, it doesn't have to be a literal interpretation. I didn't read it that way, but some members are. The other thing that I think um, we need some clarity on is applications from the public. Yeah. Did you intend for us to open this up and get applications willy-nilly from everybody who wants and will set criteria, but anybody, anybody can apply. And I will, um, so I think that the, we're having some difficulty in developing the process because of some of that kind of misunderstanding. I personally <laughs> think that the leveraging of funds is the, the best thing we can do with this money. And I'll tell you right now, there's a boatload of money for bridges, roads, water, sewer, community spaces, housing, libraries, Ex energy for municipal buildings and ADA for municipal buildings, recreation and trails, and there's more coming. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a boatload of money out there, and so, uh, so I think that we're we're caught in this place of are we supposed to open it up to everybody and anybody can put in an application, um, and do we have to do a survey? And I think that's. And what does community engagement mean? We, we. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. so, I, so we are kind of going in circles. And we have a meeting next week. And I um, think we're going to have to make some decisions. And um, But it would be good to have some clarity from you about the survey and the application process. Did you mean it that everybody could put in an application? And, and by everybody, do we mean that's myself? I can I can apply for the money, and you you're going to give me no. It says some money. It says yeah, applications okay. from the public. Right. So I mean, we can set some criteria. Right. But what what was your thinking? Um. Yeah. So I'm going to say that first of all, this was a template that came down from VCRD, yes. right. and at the no, time, no VLC. I mean, VLC. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> Too many fees, yeah. um, and so I think at the time that we stood this up, mm -hmm. we weren't necessarily even clear what we right. wanted from an ARPA committee. Um, so I think that might be where some of the the link the language is getting confusing because I, I think you know in retrospect maybe that we would have been clearer on that. Um, I will say personally, I don't personally feel like this money, well, I don't feel like it should be distributed among the public willy-nilly, obviously. Um, I'm, my feeling was that it would be for big town projects that would support small town projects. Um, so more about feasibility studies for sidewalks and, and feasibility studies for revitalization of the downtown. It wasn't going to go towards um, you know, a nonprofit, however good they do in the community, wasn't going to go towards their next project. Um, that was my feeling. I don't know if that was the sense of the rest of the board. Can, can I just make a suggestion on, yes. the, on the Peg's suggestion to just take that word out? Yeah. If it were me, I would make a suggestion to take the whole the whole thing, the out. whole second, be it further resolved, or the third one. So you just leave the. The huh? one that's where are you? Where are you? For uh, so if you go, if you look on the first page, now mm -hmm. therefore, and then the first one is be a further resolved, and that says what the purpose is. I'm and not. I'm not. Wait, I'm not. 
I'm following you. I'm looking There's, at the. Are you on whereases? No. You're you on have the, the amended resolution? No. no. I didn't know there was an amended yeah. resolution. So there is an amended resolution. Oh. <laughs> the one that says that the select board um, is going to take out a certain number. And so did you take out this whole paragraph there? Here. Do what do you want you, to give me some of you? Yeah. I think it's As the chair of the committee, you're, you're, you, you, it's within your purview to have access to this. Really? Okay, so what I was talking about was, yes, the last whereas. The last whereas. Oh, I would take that, not the last one, but the, oh, there are too many whereas. Yeah, yeah, no oh, the, the, yeah. the one on the, the whereas that the duties and functions uh, shall include okay. but not limited. Uh huh. You're saying to strike that whole thing. I, I would take that whole thing out. Because the, the last bar it says so it's, it starts there and it's basically. You it's, mean all these 10 points or whatever they are, yeah. take all of those out? Really? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, again, yeah. I would say, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying and I don't disagree with you, but I would say this is in good faith. And I know, right. I, I, I feel like you know that. And I would just say that to the rest of the committee. This is my opinion. It's I'm not talking for the select board. But this is in good faith. This was, as Eileen said, a boilerplate that came down. So what we're hoping you all can do is come up with some good ideas as to how we might best spend this money and leverage it as effectively as possible. And don't bother getting caught up in the process more than you have to mm -hmm. if it's preventing you from achieving what you need to achieve. But again, I'm just saying that and we're not saying that and I know uh, believe me, I've had these process discussions with people. I know how complicated that can be. Good faith. This is not legislature. This no, is not I don't statute. think there's not. I don't think there's a. I don't think good faith is the issue. I actually think the committee wants more direction. I don't think. I think they want more direction from the select board. That's what. That's what people are saying. So it's not. It, it's not just in good faith. Do you know? Well, um, yeah, well, and then we don't want, we, I, I don't want the committee to go and do a bunch of work and have it come back to us and say, no, we didn't, that's not what we meant at all. So right. I, a direction is good. Um, and I think but but, 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 but that's what we're doing. asking a committee to, that's, that's why we appointed a committee, so right. that we don't have to do that. Right. This is right. what we, no, I we, we took a qualified group of people and said, hey, you guys can make some good decisions here. I, I think that the direction that the committee is looking for is, did, did, were you thinking that this would just be open to everyone? We had this big conversation last time. I think time. this has been a big conversation. What did of conversation, you mean yeah. by public applications? Do you have, if, if we go, if we set up a process that sends out and lets um, all, any nonprofit or any business or whatever apply for this, and then you say, but really, we had in mind that it should be something that leveraged a lot of money for the town. For the big T, not the little T, big T. Um, and we come back with, and you say, well, oh, no, that wasn't what we meant. That's a, the kind of direction I think that the committee is looking for. What did you mean by public application and what did you mean by soliciting applications? So um, I, I, my feeling would be, based on the recommendation of the chair of the committee that we're discussing, that striking this whole section if that's the best thing to do in order for you guys to be able I mean there's one whereas here that for me sums this whole thing up whereas it's the one two three four five six seventh whereas whereas that the purpose of the ARPA committee shall be to determine appropriate uses for 734,000 of the town of Putney's ARPA award to make a prioritized list of recommendations to the Putney Select Board for spending. Boom. Right. That, that, that's your charge right that there. That's our charge. And the, the next one, the next two, complicated. Um, because it gives, not the next two. Not the next the, two, but the, the, but the, big, one. the one that's so specific yeah, you're right. saying is complicating the issue. So um, I'll make a motion that we strike good. that. Okay. It's been, uh, oh no, do I have a second on that? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to strike the <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth, whereas. From the, from the ARPA resolution. Which is the whereas that 
has, um, has, has, has the points. ten bullets ten that right. are complicating um, things. Okay. So that's been laid on the table. Is there discussion among the board? Peg, is that going to help or hurt in your mind? Um, <laughs> I'm okay with striking all that if the question that is being asked is clarified. The one about public The one about, yes. Because if there is consensus among the select board that the, the funds need to be used by the big T town of Putney, that is not the understanding of this committee. It's of and, some. Of some okay. in this committee. Okay. And the, I think we need to clarify that now. Okay. Because I don't want we, that committee to be right. spinning right. its wheel. Hands by this. Yeah. You don't have to put that in the whereas. Though. That no, no, we don't. So that's right a now. separate thing. Okay. So, so my, is there, a, yeah, let's poll everybody. So. My opinion is that this is about doing the right thing for the town as a whole, not for individual groups. That, that having been said, there may be some individual groups for whom they're trying to do a great thing for the town, and therefore it warrants them asking, requesting some of this money. Right. But no, this is not a pot of money, in my opinion, that is being made available for people to apply for them to have a piece of it for for their no well my my okay. sense of the direction that this is going is that there is a will be a set of criteria including you know the biggest impact for the town as a whole um, perhaps alignment with some bonus points for alignment with the with the three big projects that the Correct. whole town town came around you know rallied around um, leveraging you know is this going to leverage other money other you know so that those would be criteria but that if a nonprofit in town felt like they could meet that that they would be eligible to be apply that if the you know the um, the community center, right. Right. you know, if they're the best ones to meet the criteria for building a for community leveraging. center right. and leveraging funny funds, then they should be able to apply. So, I I, I would like it not to be limited to okay to, to just um, town. Can I just get a yeah. sense of the rest of the word, Charlie? Where are you, where are you standing on this? Um, if the if the concern of the ARPA committee is simply the language in paragraph six, subparagraph six, that you want to change, Peg. If that whole, if that language were deleted, would, in your view or in the committee's view, the rest of it be okay to stay as is? No, we're in a different question yeah. right now. The question is striking that whole section. But that's assuming we, we did that, yeah, that's, I, I, we are that's sort of the on motion. A we're, on mo we're on a motion, and I'm, I'm sort of segueing into something else just briefly. And the question is, if what is your feeling about using ARPA money for projects other than town projects, government projects? I'll get to you in a second, Karen. Thank you. Do you have a, do you have a strong feeling one way or the other? Not having thought about this or considered it, no, okay. not, not yet for the purpose of this meeting, but okay. I don't want to hold things up. No, it's okay. We're just getting a sense. Can, can, can I ask one clarifying question? <laughs> because applying, I mean, I think that that also is a complicating factor of this. Because, I, I mean, are we actually going to have applications for specific people to apply for money because I well, if that, we strike I, this then I guess we're asking them to come up with a process exactly right? that's what I was thinking is there yeah. would be a process but is it an uh, I think that that is one of the issues that we've been grappling with is that if we have an application process who's going to score the applications who's going to set the criteria are we setting the criteria for the applications yeah and who's going to score the, the applications and then who uh, because, um, and I, I'll tell you, I've been on a number of um, 
places where applications come in and you read them. And scoring isn't always what it's uh, cracked up to be because yeah. you'll come up with a score and then you say, this, this one scored higher than this one, but really this one is something that's going to be transformative in our community and this one got a higher score for, yeah. for whatever reason because yeah. because we're we're all volunteers setting right. up the criteria mm -hmm. and, and then somebody has to has to score them and read them and um, determine and then do we just go by the top scores I and we've had this conversation that's a complicated yeah, process right. it is a yeah. very complicated process um, Eric what's your take on let to see it Go towards the town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we. I have, have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. If, if the motion on the table or the discussion <coughs> is to take out that entire whereas clause, mm -hmm. I question the wisdom of doing that because then the amended resolution says nothing about the specific duties and functions of the committee. Well, it has a purpose, and the right. purpose is that um, they'll make a prioritized list of recommendations to the Putney Select Board. Yeah, I it, mean, this, this, to some degree, that guy right there, mm -hmm. uh, it, for me, boils the entire thing. That's the charge that I, I, I thought we were giving this yeah. committee. Yeah. And we amended it so that that seven hundred and thirty-four thousand is minus one hundred and fifty. But right. Um, um, so okay, in other so words, you're saying, Josh, that this whereas clause, including the language and make a prioritized list of recommendations to the board for spending, is kind of an umbrella of yes uh, directive, if you will. Yeah. Without tying the committee's hands to, to specific items. Right. That, yes. That, I think yes. so. I think that okay. was the intent. And, and I, I guess I would qualify that by saying, you know, if the committee determines that X amount, X percentage of the money should be allocated towards groups that will go through some sort of an application process, then the committee determines that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that should be, uh, again, I, I I just don't think we should do that if we have consensus on this board that, that we're not that, that we're that not that's okay not with what that. We're doing. Yeah, right. that's not what you we as a board want to do. We need to stop the process now because it's not fair to have this committee working through with without that some without that parameter. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Karen, well, I'm sorry. Can, can I please? Yes, go ahead. Here's my idea to create this committee to help the board mm -hmm. um, with this money. And I agree, you know, leveraging the money is important. But I will state that nonprofits, they can't access this money if it's unless the town allows allocates it. it to them. Right. So that's important and I know you know a nonprofit over here and a nonprofit over there and a nonprofit down there it's all part of the town folks right we're all part of the town so I think um, you write about the resolution and you know it's a guide it doesn't have to be literal but it is in this case but um, I think we need to be open and you know, and, and have a process in whatever that looks like, and maybe this committee won't be able to, to determine that, which would come back on the select board and me to figure out, because ultimately this board will be the decision maker um, with, the, with the money. Yeah. So. No, and I, I'm not arguing against that. I'm arguing that getting caught up in that at this stage Right. is premature because trying to figure yes. out an application process and everything okay. else is way you you guys don't need to be doing that if you were to say for example it is our opinion that the town would be wise to prioritize the use of hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of supporting local nonprofits mm -hmm. that would be but through a process as to, as will be determined right. there you go that's your recommendation but you guys don't need to get into the weeds like that at all. 
because that's then up to us to say, yeah, we think that's a great idea. Okay, can three of you figure out how to do that? Well, okay. So are you saying, Josh, that, that if, we, if this committee decided that it's going to take the 734 minus the 150, whatever right. that yeah. ends up being, and it's going to say there are a number of nonprofits in this town that really could um, benefit. Yeah. yeah, could benefit. And we're just going to say we'll take 150,000 or 125,000 and put it in that pot of money. We don't have to go through the process of figuring out who it is that's going to get it or how they're going to get it or how they're going to apply yeah. it. That you're going to do that? Is or, that what you or we may come back to you and say, actually, we don't want you to use the money for that. Or we might come back to you and say, that's great. Figure out the process. But before you do that, I think what Josh is saying. Correct me if you're wrong. If I'm wrong, but what he's saying is what we what we what we're looking for is a is for that committee to come up with a priority of how to use that funding in the first place. Where where is the biggest bang for our buck? And beyond that, there's minutia. But the first piece that we what we'd like to see is the prioritization of that money. And I think that's where we're running into the difficulties. Okay, so some people think that. It should be open, an open application yes. with certain criteria, and some people feel that it should be just big T projects that leverage this other money, because a lot of the nonprofits aren't going to be able to leverage the federal and state money that's out there, because it's meant for municipalities. Right, right. It is. So they, that, that isn't going to leverage a lot of money. Okay. Um, and, and so I think that's where... That's where we're having the difficulty. Is are you saying that there's not a clear majority one way or the other? Well, we haven't. Um, it's if we remove the minutia piece, it, do you think you can get there? I, I'm um, doing um, some um, models for the next meeting, and we're just going to have to vote and see if we've got them. You do know that we lost one member. Yes, Lisa Papazian resigned, mm -hmm. right? And we would love to have a replacement. For okay, her. she was part of the uh, not certainly nonprofit. Was she nonprofit or for profit? No, I, I I don't know what she represented, and I, it's a little confusing to me because I don't think there's anybody there a for profit business owner. Well, she um, would have been. She would have represented. I mean, she I would have been for profit because she's. A, I think she, she has her own business. Oh, I think she's Justin for is a. Justin. Justin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Can I put a about a mem about an adding a new member? Uh, yeah. I would propose that we do not do that quite yet. Okay. This whole committee needs to be reappointed after town meeting. We're up. Our term is up. Um, That's true. And we yeah. need to reappoint. Oh, yeah. Right. I. I propose that we give the committee a particular task to complete by town meeting and, it, and see if we can rise to the occasion and complete the task. And if we can't complete the task, then I think the town, the select board says, this, this committee is not functioning well. The way and we, need, okay. to, we, we need, need to lay it down it. And, and revisit what this committee is about. Okay, do you have a task in mind? My task, my, the task <laughs> I think. <laughs> you go, Peg. Well, I, I just, it's making me nuts. Yeah, you know? it needs to be clear. It needs yeah. to be clear. Yeah. I think, and, and I can understand why it hasn't been clear. Look at all these, this yep. minutia no, that we have yeah. to yeah. get lost in. I think we should give the committee the task of coming up with large buckets Yes. Of how, what percentage of the funds we want to spend on what types of things, categories, very large buckets. Okay. We think this percent should go to nonprofits in the community. We think this percent should go, whatever we decide our buckets are. Right. Okay. But if we, if we, to me, that's the kind of the first task. Okay. To and if we can't, I don't know, Jeanette. What do you think? You know. I. I it makes some sense to me, but I think that without us really understanding what money is out there that can be leveraged, and without us understanding what the needs in Putney are mm -hmm. around hazard mitigation, we have culverts. I was talking to somebody up at the Sinopa the other day, and he said, um, you should put it all in a fund so that the next time we have to replace a, a big box culvert, 
we have the funds for the match. Well, we can't do that, but we there are there are culverts and bridges right now that we know need to be replaced. And there's mat, there's lots of money out there for right. that. So I think that without us knowing what what the real um, needs of the town are right now, do we need um, any water and sewer infrastructure um, yes. development? Yes. yes, we do that. <laughs> so without us knowing what those big big bucket big items are, it it's a little hard for me to say. Well, we're going to put. Um, Guilford did it that way. They kind of decided, and they put 24 percent of it into town infrastructure money or projects. So that didn't sound like very much to me. 24 percent. No, I I agree. But depending on how you do it, I mean, town infrastructure. Yeah, I mean that's a that's if you if you said town infrastructure. I mean, for me, that could mean specifically sewer and water. Or it could mean sewer, Sorry, water, well, culverts, no, everything no, they, else. They put twenty four percent town. Yeah, so that's not enough. Yeah, but, I agree. But, with so you. what I'm saying is, I don't know that I I could say we should put seventy five percent into big T projects because I don't know what those projects are. Well, I don't think that this committee is capable of discerning that. That's my. I don't think okay. this committee is capable of that. So I think if we it, I don't know what, you know. I think we are. I think if we can get a list from this, well, you, of you, what you're, what you're thinking of, what you've got in the capital fund or the, cap, the projections for the next three to five years of what you're going to need to do in town to, um, I, I mean, I, this building, this building, that's, right. that's one of the things that you're working on, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there. Um, I don't know if the fire department, if they, they need. We need a truck. So, we need, yeah. so I you, think that the t I think that we can. I, I think the most this committee can do at this point is say, say, is very large, large. Priorities, concepts. the concepts. The priority is that this percentage should be going towards the town's needs. This percentage right. should be earmarked for these three projects that BCRD has come up with, and we're going to give X amount. You know, we're going to give ten percent, ten percent, ten percent to those three projects. We think that you know X amount should go to. Um, nonprofits. I, I, I just don't. Jeanette, remember, I remember when the town tried to say what some of their needs were, and everybody was like, "No." Okay, no. Right. So, I, I, I get can, that. But can, can I just add can, one thing? Yes, one more so, thing. That I, we do have a motion on the table. Three bucket, those three things that they came up with. If you look at housing, for example. We're not going to be able to do more housing here unless we have water and sewer infrastructure right. projects and unless we have do something about some of our roads and bridges. So they're all connected. So I'm not sure that how, how we, I'm happy to make buckets. I'm a little unhappy to think about assigning percentages. That's okay. So that may be something the ARPA committee can work out. Yeah, we can. Okay, so we that. so first of all, we have a motion on the table. What I'd like to do is pull it back from this from the task and the and the sense of the board. Um, focus on the um, motion that's on the table. I do have comment online. So, uh, Mr. Fairman. I can't even see who's online. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first. Uh, it seems to me that in speaking about percentages, you're putting the cart before the horse because percentages would actually depend on what potential projects uh, you actually have in front of you. Uh, secondly, uh, I would suggest that the question is, the fundamental question is not who applied for the money, it is who benefits from the money. And I, I've been paying a special attention to what Senator White has advised, simply because uh, she is undoubtedly the most experienced uh, person in the room. Uh, I, 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 I commend your excellent deliberative session 
and it seems to me that you are edging toward, and correctly so, uh, let's hold off doing very much until the committee is, is reappointed after town meeting, which I believe at this point is just four weeks away. Uh, just some miscellaneous points. If you're going to delete that whereas, however, I would suggest that, uh, I would suggest and request that it be read so the public will know what it was that you deleted. Thank you. We can do that. Um, is there further discussion? So, so I want to limit it to striking this right now, and then we can go back to okay. the, the, the task force. I mean, the, not the, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, <laughs> the task. <laughs> um, so is, is, every, is, is, is there more discussion on striking this whereas? Would you like me to read yes, that please. for the record? That so whereas that the duties and functions of the ARPA committee shall include but not be limited to the following keeping the one keeping the select board apprised of the ARPA award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with civil rights requirements current eligible uses and treasures treasury's compliance and reporting guidance document current timeline of funding for obligation and spending as well as reporting two Provide public education on the municipality's ARPA award, eligible uses, and applicable guidelines. Three, develop a plan for completing the purpose that includes a timeline with milestones and deliverables. Four, develop a solicitation and selection process to vet requests for funding and guide the allocation of funds that will include scoring criteria, proposal, and application templates, key dates, information meeting for applicants, application due date, date recommendations will be made to the select board, a point of contact for request, etc. Five, communicate with municipal staff officials regarding the proposal process and collect proposals for town of Putney project. Six, Carry out community engagement and stakeholder outreach to invite and collect surveys and applications from the public. Seven, gather and review proposals and applications. Eight, explore opportunities to leverage additional state and federal grant programs with submitted proposals and applications. Nine, score applications and proposals. Ten, prioritize qualified proposal and applications to make recommendations to the Putney Select Board. Okay. Is there further discussion among the board about striking this whereas? Are there comments online? Any more comments in the room? Karen? Just one comment that came to me from the town manager's report. <laughs> so the BCRD um, strategic planning report may be out to us by next week, mm -hmm. but definitely by town meeting. Okay. They will be bound and um, we may be able to just deliver them at town meeting. Okay. So that too could be key. Helpful. For, yeah, yeah, a lot of what's in here is a, kind of already been done. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, any other further discussions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, so we struck that. Okay, so the next piece is, first of all, I'm not sure that we really got a good sense of the board. I, my feeling is that it's a bit mixed. Um, there was a strong for the town. I'm pretty strongly for the town. I heard maybe if it's you know um, a good, solid project that benefits the town, I, I believe you're on board with the same thing. It's sort of like maybe if it's really good for the town, right? And right. Um, Charlie has no opinion at this time, so it's a mixed bag. Um, so I'm not sure that really helps you much. <laughs> um, I would say on my part, I would be extremely skeptical of any project um, that um, did not clearly benefit the town yeah. and also had any possibility that it would go away if that nonprofit went away. Um, I would want it to be in perpetuity in some way or guaranteed that way. Or so for, I would, or at least hope for. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah as much as we can. Exactly. So, um, so, I, so that's where I'm coming from. I, I don't. I, I the nonprofits in town do excellent work. Um, they all are all are very vital to the town, but they ebb and they wane, and they, um, you know, they and they could fold at any time. So I, I don't want to. I don't want to use public funding for possibilities like that. That's where I'm coming from. Um, Would there be any benefit 
Arlene to including some language in here. That's to where that effect. That's where I'm We're hoping. Voicing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the that's the sense that you know, they're looking for. I think. Hopefully, at least it gives a little bit, a little bit of direction. You wanted to. Do you still want to give the ARPA committee a task? And if so, do we would we need to vote? We probably would want to vote on that. Can I ask, uh, Jeanette, you, you sort of early in the conversation, you had a list of things that seemed to me like some sort of priorities that you had thought about. And my, my sense was that was the kind of list we were, or, or I was maybe thinking. No, I, I've just been, I've been attending workshops and webinars and talking to every town around that I can talk to and having conversations with VC, VLCT and Wyndham Regional and stuff and those those things that I listed can you, would are, you the mind? Things, are the things that they've told me that there's now boatloads of money for, okay. so for these municipalities. Are, okay. These are federal funding grants that, that federal are federal and grants, state. That are, Some of them are a combination are, of federal right. and state. Available so right now, okay. Bridges, roads, culverts, water, sewer, community spaces, housing, libraries, energy, ADA for municipal buildings, recreation trails, and there's more coming now. That's, there, that, there. that's your list, in my opinion. And think about, think about. I mean, that's the vast majority of it. There no, might be child care too. Is right, right, right. No, no, no. no. But there's a list. But there's, there's, yeah, there is a list. It, 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 the one that, one, the ones that I list are the ones that I have listed are just ones that are available to municipalities. There are, there's other money also, like child care money. Um, or there's a, I think nine million dollars in arts money um, yeah. that can be. Um, generated but through not not just through the municipalities what i read here was just right. municipalities there is a ton of money out there. i mean i think that's right i think that's the gist of what i would be is is a list like that saying these are the places you're going to be able to maximize your return on investment mm -hmm. this is where you should be putting your money uh, very basically that's what i would hope would be coming from you guys um, so do you want us to actually uh, list things under those or just list the places where we think that you should be that you should be looking you should be putting money here or are you looking to us to to make actual proposals to you under under community spaces we believe that, um, that we should spend the money in this way we should do it this way or in bridges we should replace these four bridges or I mean what how detailed do you want or do you just want us to give you a list of where we think the money should best be spent I, yeah I mean I think oh. I, yeah and you know there's there's banks for the buck and there's bigger banks for the buck so right. if there's you know if there's something really juicy out there then that's absolutely something that we would want to do but otherwise yeah I mean we're looking for we're looking for direction from the ARPA committee on where to spend this money. And we're looking for direction. I, I know, yeah. but. And the, the, the other thing I would add, and I, I totally agree, bigger bang for the buck, yes. Urgency also, I mean, yeah. the, you know, the more we think about this and the less, I mean, this last one that we just applied for, it closes in a week. Right. You know, these grants, and there are gonna be a lot of them, but they're coming fast and furious, and it won't be long before we're suddenly saying, Darn it, there was, you know, yeah. $2 million that we could have gotten if we had done X, Y, and Z. So that, I, I, I mean, and I, how far into that you can actually get, Jeanette, I don't know. I mean, I think your personal knowledge of this stuff is tremendously helpful in that realm, but I think that that's what we need to be thinking about. It's like, okay, how do we take advantage of this money as effectively as we can, and within that, what does that mean as far as time frame? That's what I would be hoping and, and for. If you, if you came up with a project, if you said, We're, we really think that we should put some of this money into um, the, 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 the municipal, the town hall, or we should put it into um, the roads and, roads and bridges, roads and ridges, or the, um, wherever you say the sewer, water sewer, VLCT will, guide you right. you tell them where you want to put their money and they will they will find all the leverage for you katie buckley is an amazing awesome. resource yes 
and and they so they will they will help you figure out right. where the matching money is and how much you need to put in for if you have a project that's going to cost ninety seven thousand dollars if it's a ten percent match or twenty percent match or whatever it is. So so the, the, to to take all of that load off of the shoulders of your committee. Uh, of trying to figure out all the little details because via there's no point no point in you guys inventing a wheel that's going to be reinvented or has already invented by VLCT for example think about big picture and think about priorities for the town and I I think we're all clear that the town is the focus I mean if yeah. there are some exceptions to that and it's a small amount of money or relatively small percentage I think that's fair but it's, it, but it's got to be to the benefit of the town because... Yeah. But there's a difference between to the benefit of the town and... So that's part of your discussion. What percentage do we think should go to that group that and you're I talking don't even about? Feel, it's not that I even feel that strongly about it. I mean, if we decided that all the money should be spent on town projects, mm. I, I'm not here to just to argue that. I'm just saying that that is not what we've communicated right. via this to this group of people who've been mm. arguing about this and trying to mm. sort this out and that we have an obligation to be really clear to that group if that's what we mean yeah. so that they can choose to participate or not participate or you know like it, I just feel like we've well, the, can, can I add one more thing to that? I know we're sort of going <laughs> <It's> on. <fine. laughs> Personal agenda should not be part of this committee. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not accusing you or anybody else of that. But anybody who's on this committee for the purpose of garnering funds for their individual entity should not, they should recuse themselves from discussions about that because mm -hmm. that is a clear conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is not okay. It's okay to have a conflict of interest, identify it, and then recuse yourself from the discussion, but there should not be people vying for this money in that committee. No, that's not and, what I was Okay, I, I, just want I, was be, I just want to be totally clear about that, because no, sometimes that's a problem. That we, we, we gave this committee a charge mm -hmm. that was here, mm -hmm. and we specifically went out and looked for people from different segments of the community right. and I think we've really muddied it by not being clear. We've put nonprofit representatives on the committee mm -hmm. and then we gave them a charge that seemed like nonprofits were also going to be part of the public and it, they're, they've, they don't want to be have a conflict of interest. Right. They've kept saying some of them like, "Look, I don't. I want to be really careful that there's no conflict of interest here." But I think we we need to be clearer. Okay. I think we need to if if we're going for town. I money, so, yeah. Then I think. We just throw the committee away and just do what other towns have done and make let the select board do it. Well, we make we make get to that point. How many but, other towns have I'm, done that? I mean, is yes. that going to make it easier? Sure, Jared. Yeah. yeah. Is that going to yes. make it? I mean, I mean, I mean is so, that going to take away the aggravation? Oh yeah. So I yeah. So I mean, the re the the original reason why we I think we stood up this committee is because I mean, there's this pot of money, and we have so many different things that we could do with this money, and some of them are pretty urgent. Um, we didn't have the expertise and didn't have the time and I guess I felt like we needed to put it out a little bit to the community so that you know it mm. wasn't just us sitting here in a vacuum saying yeah, giving everybody a voice, give everybody a voice. A choice. Um, since that ha since we stood up the committee we also had the VCRD come in so I think a lot right. of maybe maybe a lot of what the what we were expecting this committee to originally do that's already been accomplished and I think right. maybe striking right. this is a good thing to do right now because it has the potential of resetting the committee. We had we had the VCRD project come in. They came up with some very clear ideas. There were also some very you know there were twenty four other ones that you know we didn't end up going with. Those are already there, so I I don't think they need to go through this process anymore. My question is, if we strike this or we have struck this. Mm -hmm. Do those that are on the committee feel like that's going to get you somewhere? 
And I guess we wouldn't even know that until you meet again. Yeah. I'm right. Yeah. So I don't know. And I, I know you wanted to give you know, I think we a, a kind a of a task. deadline. I so, think and we I, need a, a task, a deadline to produce something for the select board. Something, anything. So again, I will refer to this one whereas, and I this I, I, I maybe this is way broader or. I, the purpose of the ARPA committee shall be determined appropriate uses for, again, this amount of money, $734,000 of the Town of Putney's ARPA award and make a prioritized list of recommendations to the Putney Select Board for spending. Final decision on spending will be made by the Putney Select Board. That's your charge, right there. Yeah. I mean that that I I don't know how much clearer uh, so, I, mean, I don't feel like we can be a whole lot clearer than that. Um, I, if if you come up with a list that's here, there, and everywhere, we can take a look at it and say, "Whoa, this is here, there, and everywhere." That's not going to work. Uh, but but that's the list. That's the that's the charge right there. It's that simple. And I, I maybe I'm totally oversimplifying. I know that this is a complicated committee. Right. Yeah. It's not that complicated. That's a pretty straightforward charge. Right. So I think that um, I think that we can come up with we can come up with something. And Eric, to your comment about um, just some other towns have just the select board yeah. has made the decision. And and I have to say that towns are doing from here to here. There are some towns right. who just said we're just going to plop it all into this year's budget and reduce the taxes for this year. Well, that didn't seem very smart because next year their taxes it's are going to go way up. Yeah. And then there are some towns, like Brownboro, that haven't even started to think about it yet because they haven't had their, they've been focusing on town meeting. So it is, we are not way behind. Right. And I, I think that the, um, this committee, it's a, it just, it's an interesting committee and it's a good committee and it has, raised all the all the questions and had all the conversations that I think were good whether we actually come to a concrete decision or not I think those conversations were good and I think they were good to have out there in the community and have people aware that right. we were having those conversations right. so show well, us some good progress yeah, that exactly. You know, like, what exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. right here so that's, that's it okay. yeah. come up that's with it. a list of ideas right Priority. priority, a list of priorities. A list of priorities. Like Josh said, they can be all over the place. Yeah, right. Just okay. give us a list. I mean, if that you need direction cool. on where to start, yeah. we have the VC, we had the VCRD report. Karen, I'm sure, has a list of capital plan projects. Well, we have I, so, but I think also, I mean, the other thing you've been hearing clearly, and Jeanette can definitely guide you on this, is leverage, 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 right. leverage. So yeah. deadlines of grants Hugely that are coming important. up right now, the, those are those are the priorities. That's a priority. Okay. You know, the other thing you can say is we'd like to take three quarters of this and put it into the capital fund, you know, a reserve capital reserve fund, and that leaves it to the town, although we have to expend it yeah, before, well, we can if you expend, expend it. it before 26, yeah. but, yeah. but if you want to, you know, really just hand it off and say we don't want this responsibility, you can do that. But I think this gives you an opportunity. This is about the priorities that this crowd thinks it comes up with. You know, and I think that the, the issue about nonprofits and the kind of great work that our nonprofits do and that, and that they should, maybe there are projects that they have that if, if a nonprofit has a particular project that they see that mm -hmm. is going to be of a benefit to the whole town, right. it seems to me that it makes sense for that application in that project to go through the town so that it can leverage that municipal money. Absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the nonprofit can come up with a, a project, but that it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be the applicant and right. well, they don't. And coming, they could come to the select board and say, we we want to. I don't know. I don't know what. And accept, enhance our accessibility. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, a, yeah. A physical example would be. But that, it could go know. through. Absolutely. Through the town. Yeah. Right, and then in that way, we're 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 approving the project, not so much where the funds are coming from. We we might need to use that decision as a you know we might say well we're going to use ARPA funds to fund that. But in that way, we're we're say that that's a better pass through, I think. Yeah. Wait, say that again. If if we're having people come to us and say, 
we have this pro like um, the community center did, right? They, we're coming to you. Can you please, you know, sign off on this grant uh, proposal? And can you um, also maybe match the ten percent for us? Right. We have the we have the ability to say yes, yes. We would like to do that. And then it's our responsibility to find out where that money is coming from. If it comes from ARPA, it comes from ARPA. If it comes from the general fund, it comes from the general fund. If it come, goes to town meeting, it goes to town meeting. But we, we would be, we wouldn't necessarily, it wouldn't be ARPA money. This is going to be used from ARPA money. ARPA money is secondary in that process, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, but I think importantly, it allows any organization that we're supporting to leverage that money, yes, which again right. is the yes. most important thing we can do at right. this moment. If we can make a contribution to a group that can leverage that money for the purpose of supporting something they want to do, that's something I would definitely support. And to further clarify what Josh has articulated, it might be useful in that whereas clause after the word purpose to add the words and charge to. Where? Purpose of. I, I mean, I would say that's inherent in there. I, mean, it, I, 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 I think. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we've clarified. Uh, yeah. We beat this to death. Yeah. yeah, I think, and I, I, I take Josh's well, point, but you don't have to. Well, yeah. I, yeah. No. I mean, we can, is, if the committee can't function, we can dissolve the committee. Well, I that's, mean, that's why that's, I think you know, to give them one, a couple more chances to try to function. Okay. Right. And if they the can't, yeah. I think we yeah. should dissolve the so, committee. So, so come, up with a, come up with a prioritized yeah. list. of It doesn't yeah. have to be finalized, but come up with a list. Yep. Okay. All right. You guys good? On our, oh, wait. One. I have. I do have a comment. Moving right along. I do have a. Wait, I do have a comment on my. I did try to skip this. I don't know. Um, twice. Twice. Um, Mr. Fairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, at the outset of this meeting, it was mentioned that uh, select board meetings are getting a long, are getting too long at two hours. <laughs> This one is now at two hours and six minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason it is, is because of your excellent deliberations. So uh, it certainly has not been a waste of uh, anyone's time, I would take the liberty of suggesting. Uh, I offer the suggestion that uh, the committee really, you know, we're talking about in the Town meeting, the committee, uh, the, the committee could very usefully uh, come up with a, with, with a list for town meeting of where they suggest the money could be spent. Mm -hmm. And uh, further, uh, Senator White earlier on uh, listed uh, uh, a number of purposes for which the money can be spent. Uh, there's one that she forgot, and I've checked this chapter and verse with the state of Vermont, and that is uh, broadband expansion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, that is a perfect segue. All right. Are we good? Are we good with the ARPA yes. discussion? Okay. <laughs> Moving along Thank to the one I've been coming. trying to get to all <laughs> night. Thank you very much for coming. Um, is the deeper fiber answers Sorry. to follow up questions, which is core. Core, you're on now. Sorry to make you wait. Hi, everybody. Hi, Core. And uh, Cor. hi to Jeanette. I haven't seen you in a long time. Good hi, to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, I'm here as the Putney's uh, volunteer representative to the DV Fiber Board. And just for anyone who's tuning into this topic for uh, the first time, DV Fiber is the business name for the Deerfield Valley Communication Unions District. And that includes 24 towns, which is all of Wyndham County, plus three towns in Bennington County and Weston. Um, and the purpose of the project is to provide a publicly owned internet um, uh, broadband to every unserved and underserved E911 address in those towns. And, um, and then also to anybody who would also like to get that service, um, which is good for just a competitive business environment and also to get service to people, um, to locations that have not been served by any um, commercial enterprise. Um, Stephen John and I attended a meeting on January 11th, and Stephen John is the chair of the DV Fiber Board, and he's here tonight. 
um, and he spoke about um, an award of $21 million that uh, the project had been awarded by the Vermont Community Broadband Board, uh, which enabled us to get started on phases one to three. Um, and a pilot program was started in Reedsboro in December. So the project is actually happening, being built now. Uh, very exciting. And um, that we also talked about the fact that Putney would probably not be constructed till possibly 2024, 2025, because um, Putney has got a large percentage of um, addresses that are served, considered served. Um, whereas the first part of the project is going to towns that don't have very much served, um, very many served addresses. Um, so um, at the end of the meeting, at the end of the presentation, um, Mr. Fairman presented some questions um, that I wasn't able to ask, wasn't able to answer, rather. And um, we, uh, I took those answers, those questions, and uh, Stephen John reported some full answers and that Karen has in an email that I, hopefully she has forwarded to you guys mm -hmm. or printed out. Yeah, um, yes. But I'm just here to go over the answers um, briefly in public session so that that can be recorded and um, answer any more questions that you might have. Again, I'm a volunteer member of the board and um, I'm really just here because um, I wanted Putney to be part of this project and it needed a representative. <laughs> and um, and um, so I'm not the most knowledgeable person, um, but I am, you know, here to do what I can to give you the information. Um, so the first question was, um, how is Deerfield Valley Fiber, DB Fiber, connecting um, businesses and homes to the worldwide internet via a higher level internet service provider? And the answer is that we pay Hurricane Electric, which is an internet backbone provider, and that um, supplies um, bandwidth which comes over fiber to our points of presence, which are our structures, whereby the DB fiber network goes out to homes. So the answer is Hurricane Electric. But it's not that simple. It bounces all over the place. Um, and the second question is, what are the legal relationships among DB fiber, Valley Net of Royalton, EC Fiber of Royalton, and Great Works Internet of Biddeford, Maine? The answer is that DB Fiber has a long-term master services agreement with GWI, Great Works Internet, which includes planning and design, engineering, maintenance, operations, customer services, and VoIP. Um, the GWI engineering team will oversight the construction contract that will be awarded soon. It's not been awarded yet. And um, what's interesting in that is recently as January, um, GWI Vermont, which is a subsidiary based in Royalton, has taken over operations for ValleyNet. And so GWI Vermont is now um, operating, doing all the work for EC Fiber. So there is no relationship between DB Fiber and EC Fiber or ValleyNet, um, but they're related because um, both have contracts with GWI. The third question is, how will GWI support a Wyndham County Fiber Network from Biddeford, Maine? And so the answer is GWI Vermont is set up to provide these services locally just as it does now for EC Fiber customers. Again, that is located in Royalton, Vermont. Um, physical repairs will be provided locally under contract. Customer service calls will be answered by DB Fiber customer service representatives in a call and dispatch center in May. Um, so that's again under contract with GWI and they have a physical presence in Vermont. Question is who owns Deerfield Valley Fiber's fiber network? The answer is the member towns of the CUD. The assets are publicly owned, controlled, maintained and operated by the governing board of the CUD and the, the board is the 24 representative appointed by the respective town select boards. Um, 
question is if is the EV fibers network is sold, who will receive the proceeds? The answer is in the case of bankruptcy, the CUD statute stipulates the process for dealing with bankruptcy. There would be no benefit for the governing board of a CUD to sell assets to a private corporation. It's possible that in the case of bankruptcy, the assets of a CUD could be purchased by the highest bidder, but it would be under the state's authority and control. Um, so I am just going to open it up to any more questions. Oh, um, also Karen had a question, which was um, New Fane and some other towns have designated ARPA funds for DB fiber. And what is that for? And the answer is, um, and this goes to your point about leveraging ARPA funds, this, these funds would be matching funds the Vermont Community Broadband Board has set up a first come first serve match if any CUD member towns decide to donate any amount of the ARPA funds to the project those funds would be used to assist residents who are income qualified to get connected to our fiber service yeah. and and that would be for connections more than 400 feet from the nearest power pole hmm. so some towns have set aside funds for that because they are going to be matched funds and this means when um, DB Fiber comes to town, um, those funds would be available to assist residents who are income qualified and getting hooked up. Can you, to, um, that, that, that's a, what is that match core? Is it a one-to-one -one match? I believe that's right, Stephen. Yes, uh, this is a uh, pro pro program that the v Vermont Community Broadband Board set up what they did is they um, originally the 150 million dollars or near that that was uh, allocated for this project project by the governor and the legislature uh, of ARPA money uh, was distributed based on the needs of the town that is uh, the number of unserved and underserved addresses in each town and so a percentage allocation came to the towns and uh, and that theoretical conceptual allocation was not uh, all spent because there are only 213 towns of the 256 in Vermont that have joined CUDs. So that money is remaining available under the VCB's responsibility. And they, uh, they have uh, set up a procedure that they think will uh, attempt to leverage additional funds uh, to make sure that every person uh, on the grid can get uh, connected. Uh, and so uh, some towns <clears throat> have already taken that action and it's on a first come first serve basis. Uh, May 31st is the, is the deadline, but the reason it's first come first serve is because the VCBB is not promising to have an infinite amount of money. They have only so much, uh, it's four or five million or something like that, that they know that they have secured uh, in hand already to be able to match. So that's a one-to-one -one match the money does not go to the town that's matched. The money goes to the CUD mm -hmm. for general purposes. Now, the, uh, I know that boards have stipulated that the money they've donated go to their residents to connect their people in need because there is a, 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 a there is an expected expense for people um, that maybe uh, have a conduit and live in a, in a uh, manufactured home or uh, live too far off the road from the from the uh, power line that uh, would require additional expense besides our our free sir, free connection at 400 feet length aerial or underground um i think that's the gist of it i i do know that uh you know six or so towns i, I don't have the list in front of me but uh, uh total donations are at about two hundred thousand right now um, and so that means that it, additional 200,000 would come to the DB fiber uh, CUD project uh, for general construction or other purposes. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so if, um, given that Putney is not on the schedule for quite some time, is this, and we have to obligate the money by whatever. 2024. 2024. Um, so is that if we don't straight up donated it to you, would that count as a distribution? Uh, I don't know what you mean by distribution. What, well, what would it, would it, would it, are you taking the ARPA funds in lieu of tax uh, revenue? 
Is that what you, you're doing or not as a board in Putney? In lieu of tax revenue, what do you mean by that? Well, I understand from Katie Buckley that, uh, you know, if you're up to a million dollars, less than a million dollars, uh, mm -hmm. towns are able to just take the ARPA money and put it in their general funds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're not, we have the allowance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did. We did. We did standard take the standard allowance. allowance. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Th that that frees you up from from having you know some regulations or stipulations about about sp spending, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. But uh, yeah. I would stick to the 20, 2024 and try to make sure that certainly the PCBB has a sunset clause in their legislation. They they're not supposed to exist after twenty twenty six unless the legislation changes their mind. That, there's a sunset. To their to their existence, you know, we're not setting up a state bureaucracy here to deal with the <laughs> CUD. So, okay. uh, it's only the purpose of getting this job done. And you know, as Christine Holquist was quoted in the the Globe, uh, it's going to get done by 2026. So, um, right. I don't think that's a problem for you. But I do think the board should consider upon what circumstances. For example, let's say you don't have enough, say you donated $10,000 or 20 or whatever it was, and you didn't have that many customers who were in need, you know, getting connected by 2024. 20, well, then, you know, would you stipulate that the money come back to the town? You know, that's, that's a possibility. Okay. I'm, I'm not necessarily advocating that, but uh, any money that we have is going to go to the general good of getting, getting everybody connected and uh, getting the network built. And the more money that the CUD has that's unencumbered by debt, the better financial position we're in to keep our rates as low as possible, you know, or the, the monthly service, service fees. And in fact, our business model and the VCB's intention is to provide 60 to 70 percent of the money we need to do the whole 24 towns, uh, all thousand miles of fiber, uh, uh, unencumbered by debt. And then based on revenue uh, from customers, we would be able to uh, qualify for revenue bond at a favorable interest rate and uh, proceed to finish the project. That's really the whole principle behind the whole, every CUD has that same concept. Uh, with the exception of Southern Vermont, they have a different deal with CCI. Okay. Josh, do you have a question? Yeah, I don't want to hold anybody else. But did else you get your question answered? Um, sort of. So, so what I heard was, um, it's not a straight out donation. It would be money that we'd be holding well, back and then we would um, possibly claw it back from you if, if it hadn't been obligated by 2024. I'm sorry, my computer is just asking for a password. I'm going to have to hit that and then listen to your question again. Okay. <laughs> I think it would be. I mean, if we, if we, if we were to give it to them, yeah. then it's been an expenditure. It's been obligated. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so the the, the 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 thing that is kind of uh, the leverage that the PCBB is trying to put on the you know provide an opportunity uh, is for that money to be determined early, like now, you know, not wait until next year. Right. Uh, and and if you're willing to do that, then they're willing to pony up a matching amount that would go go to the uh, uh, CUD. I got gotcha. you. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I have two clarifying questions about that, Stephen. Um, do, the, the can you assure us that if we were to do that, that money would be allocated to Putney residents who needed that connection yeah. assistance? No, we just have we have to keep track of it in our accounting. Okay. And we have to report it back to the board, uh, your board as well as the full board. But that's that's something that see one of our principles uh, of our mission is, is stated is. Uh, that this be universally accessible to everybody. Well, there is a federal program for which now we will be able to register as an ISP and, and enable our customers, if they qualify, for the subsidy from the federal government on their monthly fees. That may not be sufficient, but at least it's the step in the right direction. But what we're concerned about, at least those towns that are getting connected uh, sooner, such as mine in Marlboro, is that we we recognize one of the obstacles for universal uh, accessibility is the uh, cost of getting connected, the initial cost. And there's no federal program to do that. Hmm. There are some programs that will help uh, mobile home parks, but we don't have any such or not, not a significant number in, in our district. So the second request I would have of you, based on the data you already have available to you, 
could you give us a recommendation as to what an allocation amount would be that would actually be somewhere in the ballpark of the right amount for the town of Putney? Yeah. Yes, so we do have a spreadsheet that takes into account what the average statewide poverty you know, level is, I mean, number of people that would be, and then also we have to assume what a number of those people would actually take the service, right? right. I mean, right. it doesn't mean they're gonna all take the service. So I know in Marlboro's case, we estimated that it would be, uh, the select board estimated, I set up a chart, they could choose between 20%, 40%, 50%, you know, 60%, 80%, you know, they could decide. They, they took the 80% number, it ended up at 24,000 or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it does vary pretty much by the size of the town. But for example, Newfane just uh, allocated 15,000. Well, uh, that's less than Marlboro, but that's because they, they reasoned that their town didn't have as many uh, uh, residents in, in need in that way. Uh, and it actually relates somewhat to the, the number of mobile uh, manufactured homes you have in a town, because those by present uh, standard of best practice should be underground connected. Mm -hmm. And that's a much more expensive proposition mm -hmm. than an aerial connection. Mm -hmm. The fiber costs the same, but it's the trenching and all that that's an expense for the homeowner. Okay. So we could come back to you and, and ask for right. advice on yeah. that. Yeah, CORE could provide that. Uh, and you know it'd be a proposal you could consider and and it, it's really uh, uh you know a, the best judgment of the of the select board in each town yeah. uh just to give you an idea of ballpark uh guilford voted thirty thousand. um a town meeting there'll be consideration in stanford uh of a, of, a, of thirty thousand, and then halifax went with sixty thousand. marble was at 24 jamaica i can't remember i don't have the top of my head but uh the, uh, the towns that, you know, um, have the greatest uh, need uh, or are thinking ahead are, are planning on this. You know, the money isn't going to go going to go to anything else. If you if you like any nonprofit organization, municipality, somebody donates something to you, you're going to accept the, the stipulations that the town, the, the select board uh, finds uh, in its best interest. Okay. Other questions on the select board? Can, uh, can we ask CORE to put it together that proposal for us, just yeah. so we know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. CORE, if it's not too much work, if you could put that together for us so that we know what that would look like, because we are in the process of thinking about ARPA funds. So. Do you want that before town meeting? Um, is it? Is, no, I don't think so. I mean, no, it's not, yeah, that's not necessary. No. But, but that deadline that, that Stephen was address. talking about, we would like to yeah. probably you consider need some time that. to deliberate and make sure it fits in with your other priorities. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Priority. Yeah. Priority number one. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Court. Court, I'll be happy to Thank you, Court. Okay. David Jones will do it for you, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I have questions online, Mr. Fairman. Madam Chair, uh, uh, Ms. Trowbridge, Trowbridge uh, uh, overlooked another question that came up. She asked me if I had any supplemental questions, and previous to that, Mr. John had shared with me a press release dated January 26th, where ValleyNet was merged into newly formed GWI Vermont, and the press release the press release states. That they were that, that ValleyNet was paying its uh, w w was providing its employees with salaries and benefits that are well below what the market offers. And the question that arose, of course, is now that we have the lowest unemployment rate in 54 years since 1969, uh, whether these employees will in fact re remain with GWI Vermont unless they get very significant uh, improvements in their remuneration. Their answer was that they, that they, that they were not privy to this information, but it is uh, to, to, just to complete what was said. Now, uh, I probably need to say from uh, where I'm coming from here just very briefly. I used to be a corporate telecommunications manager, heavy manufacturer, 18,000 employees. 
I also uh, worked for uh, in network statistics and engineering economics for a large telephone company, 10 million customers. Uh, I, uh, network statistics and engineering economics means that we were at the center of, of building uh, uh, stuff, which is called physical plan, and of serving customers. So we were, we, we were providing advice to both sides of the company in this regard. Now, what I was doing in asking these questions was I was vetting DV Fiber as a potential supplier. And uh, they, they, they answered my questions excellently. There is no doubt that DV Fiber is uh, very well run and uh, has a, a very good future. However, uh, DV Fiber has confirmed that they cannot provide service uh, to the town of Putney in the foreseeable future. Now, in that regard, uh, you have received, uh, you all have received a letter from me that I need to read into the public record, which is uh, dated, uh, as dated today, but you received it yesterday. Expediting Universal Broadband Internet Access in Putney. During the January 11th, 2023, Town of Putney Select Board meeting, DV Fiber Stephen John said, quote, I would encourage anybody who is looking at waiting two or three years to get connected to our fiber to get what they can. That's on the BCT video at one hour, five minutes and 34 seconds. <coughs> Mr. John said before then that just 17% of Putney addresses are unserved or underserved by a broadband internet service provider, far fewer than some other DV fiber towns that now have priority where DV Fiber will be expending all the funding they currently have. In other words, 17% of Putney addresses will be waiting a few years until other DV Fiber towns have universal broadband and more money is available. Already serving 83% of Putney addresses, would Consolidated Communications or Comcast Xfinity be willing and able to serve the remaining 17% this year? given that providing broadband internet access is their future residential business as people continue to give up their landlines and cable TV for smartphones and streaming? Could this expedited universal broadband internet access in Putney be facilitated by an opera grant? Heeding Mr. John's advice in the first paragraph above, we should find out. So I am volunteering to look into these feasibilities and report to you what I could find out as a private citizen familiar professionally with telecommunications and data transmission for possible future official action by the town of Putney. That's the end of the letter, but I would simply say, given my professional background uh, well, uh, and, and acting as a private citizen, I simply can go ahead and do this, and I shall be going ahead and doing it. Uh, I'll be consulting some contacts that I have in the field, and uh, I will report back to you uh, what I can find out. Now, I can work quickly and shall work quickly, but uh, I emphasize that this may take some time because I cannot simply phone a customer service number and also I must be mindful of the ARPA funding deadlines and, uh, and will be. So in, in due course and as soon as possible, you shall hear from me as to whether an alternative to waiting for uh, DV Fiber to, get, uh, to, to, to be able to serve Putney is, is, uh, is our only alternative or whether we can in fact receive service sooner. Now I realize that there are political aspects to what we're talking about here and I leave that to other people. I am an engineer and I simply stand for providing service as soon as possible. Now once I provide this, uh, this information, and I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately being vague because at this point I, I can't possibly know exactly what I'll find out and what form it will be in. But once I have done so, uh, 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 your constituents, so uh, we who live in the town of Putney, uh, will, will, will certainly let you know which they prefer, whether it is in fact it can be done sooner by someone else, whether they would prefer to wait for DV fiber, or whether they would simply prefer to have service sooner. So as I, I emphasize, as a private citizen, I can simply go ahead and do this, and I have the professional qualifications to do so, so I am going to go ahead and do it, and uh, you will receive a professional report uh, telling you whatever it was I found out, or whatever it is I find out. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Um, I'm sorry, you have your hand up. Um, uh, yeah, Stephen. I, Stephen, sorry, I can't read. Uh, well, I just want to welcome uh, Howard Fairman and uh, welcome his uh, interest and welcome his report. If he finds anything out that is uh, of uh, that he thinks is uh, worthwhile, I certainly want to hear about it. Our board wants to know about it. I'm not at liberty to um, share uh, because I'm under an NDA uh, 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 restriction uh, regarding negotiations we've had with the private providers in the area, in the region, but um, I certainly encourage uh, uh, Mr. Chairman to find out what he can, uh, and I did, uh, was sincere in saying that anybody that is tired of waiting and has another option, uh, certainly they should exercise it, but they should not get tied into a long-term contract or agree to any disconnection fees uh, because um, uh, the, the DB Fiber network will be publicly owned and uh, we will be sure that uh, people are treated fairly and um, there will be consistent uh, fee structure. Uh, and, uh, we're, you know, we, we're, we're going to have to operate in an open manner. We can't operate like a private company. Okay, is there a discussion? And just to clarify the, the timing, uh, you are in phase uh, five and six, mm -hmm. uh, 1,050, uh, people would be connected uh, by our high-level design, as our high-level design states uh, at, that, at that phase, and, uh, and 110 in the next. There are only, there are only two, uh, in, my, in my town, there are four different years when we'll be connected because we're parts of other towns in terms of the distribution service, but uh, that's uh, all part of the engineering and the efficiency that uh, Howard is, uh, Mr. Fairman is very familiar with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You are making saying even just, um, you know, when Howard, Mr. Fairman said, um, it's not going to be connected for the foreseeable future. The future we're talking is 2024 or 2025. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, you know, I can't promise what's going to happen between now and then, but you, <laughs> you are included. See, that's the thing. I've lived for 40 years in this. 45 years in Marlboro, and there's never been a plan to get any of us connected. There's been promises, but it doesn't happen. Now, the reason this is going to happen is because Mr. Fairman rightly points out we only have 21.9 million, which will only get us, according to the uh, award, 513 miles. I predict with the increasing cost, it'll be closer to 400 miles of fiber. We have a thousand to build. But as I said, there is the NTIA grant that the VCBB has put in for 100 million. The governor has in his uh, budget, recon uh, what do you call it, reconciliation or whatever, uh, the bill passed by the House. There's 30 million for the match fund for that. That's 144 million. Then in the IIJA bill, there's uh, 100 million minimum for Vermont. And since we've found so many errors in the FCC mapping being corrected, will be in excess of that. So that, that adds up to pretty close to 60 per 70 percent of what's going to be needed to, for CUDs to build and reach every single home on the grid, regardless of their location throughout the state. That is the wonderful opportunity we need to take advantage of. And mm -hmm. we certainly should have that idea and thought vetted and critiqued. Uh, and uh, I'm certainly welcoming any uh, information that uh, Mr. Fairman may provide us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't want to uh, spend too much more time on this, but uh, Mr. Fairman? Thank you, Madam Chair. I shall be very brief. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I can assure you that I will find out either that uh, the uh, uh, established carriers are not interested or that they are interested. And my criterion is getting it done during calendar 2023. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, the question is, can you do, uh, do, uh, do you want to do this? And uh, first, yes or no. And second, uh, if you want to do it, can you get it done during calendar 2023? Now, obviously, said, if they said, well, we're going to need until February, 24, uh, February 2024, well, you know, okay, I report this, and we might say, well, sure, why not? I'm not, I'm not opposing uh, DV Fiber here. What I'm saying is DV Fiber has told us they don't have the money, and we do not have the priority 
to be served until sometime in the future. And I'm, uh, I, I, but I'm, I'm looking at it from the point of view of Putney and Putney alone. Can we get service sooner? Because then I'll be able, uh, because then we will have an answer to that question, and uh, your constituents will let you know uh, uh, we want service now, or, we're, or we'll, be, we'll be glad to wait for DV fiber because we prefer uh, 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 a CUD to uh, 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 public utilities. But in order for this to be, in order for these questions to be answered, uh, we need we need some additional information, and that's what I'm going to be doing is getting some additional information to uh, to uh, help with uh, with decision making. Thank. You. Uh, okay. Thank you. Is it any? Other? Can I just one quick quick? Yes. Um, can, can I suggest that we, as a board, um, embrace Mr. Fairman's? Um, volunteering to do this for us so that as he seeks information he can say with approval of the board um, i don't think we need to vote on it but if people does everybody have yeah. have you know anybody agree that we're people. happy to have mr fairman do that yes uh, yeah it's yes. great good thank you mr fairman okay is there any other comments online uh any other discussion on the board uh thank thank you uh for waiting around and um and giving us another update um so i think we're going to move on now but thank you very much it's you're very, very welcome thank you so much all right, all right awesome okay so the next piece is the operating budgets reserve fund uh continued mr fairman uh, yes uh, thanks madam chair I, uh, you, you you want me to speak now right um your name is on the on the agenda so I'm assuming you have something okay us. okay thing is I hadn't raised my hand and, and, and I wasn't sure whether you mentioned my name whether you were oh, calling me or something I'm saying that I requested the yeah. Adam no yeah I'm calling on you okay well uh, I, I, I I should mention that uh, uh, I received uh, a, a, an excellent response uh, uh, Karen communicated with uh, uh, Samantha Ruggles of uh, RHR Smith, who uh, returned dated January 30th, a very uh, 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 excellent email of a number of, uh, con uh, containing a number of paragraphs, which of course, because this cor corresponds with our town manager, is a public record, and I would commend it to anyone about how this actually works. Now, the reason we got into this in the first place was. Uh, our town manager mentioned at one of your meetings that we had a, we had deficits in the highway fund and in the and, and in the general fund, and uh, I raised the question subsequently: uh, What are you going to do about it? Because Vermont statute says you have to do something about it. Well, it turns out that it, it, it came down to this. Uh, there are two possibilities for a deficit in terms of just the way accounting is done. A deficit can mean that expenses were, were greater than revenues, or a deficit can mean that current liabilities are greater than current assets. And in these, uh, and their current uh, generally means uh, within a year. In other words, uh, uh, payments due within a year and revenue that should be received within a year. And of course, it's always give or take because there are uncertainties. Now, what was really going on here was our, our, our town manager was talking in terms of an expenses versus revenues deficit. Mm -hmm. And the statute talks about, uh, the, the, the statute defines a deficit as a current liabilities versus current assets deficit. Now, what uh, uh, Ms. Ruggles did in her email was she uh, reconciled the two, and I'm not going to go into the detail, but uh, anyone who wants to, it's a really informative email. This is a, certainly, th this person is certainly a very good auditor and a very good uh, uh, CPA. Uh, so, uh, all I want to say is uh, uh, everything's fine. It was just a question of, we were talking about two different things. And uh, it's not my job as a member of the public to clarify this. We employ people to do this who are our town manager and our independent auditors. They have done so, and uh, there's no uh, and, and there's no problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Yes. Um, uh, yes. Thank you very much for that explanation. Um, 
Uh, is there discussion or questions among the board on this? No. Um, is there any comments online? Um, okay, so I guess we've put that matter to bed, right? Um, so the next piece is other business or closing comments. Does anybody have any closing comments? Yes, I do. <clears throat> At the last um, regular meeting, uh, in the minutes, it's noted that Vanessa Vadim is proposing to establish a task force uh, entitled a Community and Communication Task Force uh, to establish uh, procedures for community outreach. Uh, and as the minutes state, including email lists, website updates, events, etc. And I volunteer to work with her on this. Um, and we are, have been in touch. And she's forwarded a first proposal to me. And so we're working together on this. My question to the board is, is there a distinction in this context between a task force and an advisory committee? I would think a task force has an end date, a specific end date. I mean, I guess a committee can too, but a task force has got a specific goal, does it, disbands. Okay, so that's the distinction. I and think it's so. community based. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to being a, gov a government agency, it would be more, it could be right. more of a. But in this connection, if the proposal were to establish an advisory committee, would, would that be, be considered by the board? It would be under. Oh, would it be considered? Yes, know. but it would also be considered an ongoing. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Not a not a finite timeline. Right. right. And until the task is achieved. I mean, we can. Yeah, it could be a. It right. Be a it might be finite, event. but it's not defined. Right. Yeah. So an so advisory committee would would in, in essence be permanent unless dissolved. Until right. dissolved, right. Right. That, anyway, that's my that, that was it? Okay. That, that's my um, additional comment. Just okay. wanted to bring you all to that. Okay. Um, I, I know Karen and I have been talking kicking around the idea of having another work session. I don't know if we really want to do that before town meeting. Yeah. Um, but I think we do. <laughs> you sure, Josh? Yeah. yeah well, I'm good. Are you sure? For, yeah. <laughs> for old times' sake. Yeah. Um, so I, we'll probably regroup after we've reorged and um, come up with a, another time to, to go over that and uh, animal control. Animal control. All these all of these things that are on the back here. Appointment um, policy. Appointment policy. We still haven't gotten to the procedures yet. So. Um, Blight policy. <laughs> and on and on. Yeah. So, any <laughs> policy, tobacco and smoking <laughs> policy. Josh, okay, stop. enough is enough. <laughs> Josh, you're leaving us, so. Uh, um, okay, so, um, but thank you for, for taking that on. Um, oh, sure. I, I take what you're talking about are all, all uh, activities that are going to happen post town meeting. Um, I mean, if you have, I mean, if you have, other, oh, I don't have anything need to right refine, now. I mean, if you want to refine stuff, I mean, the the more polished it is by oh, the no, time no. it gets to that's us, all, that's great. That's that's cool. I <laughs> okay. just, I'm in, I'm just trying to get a handle on the timing because it might, it's going to take a little bit of work. Oh yeah, they always do. Yep. Um, I just wonder in in this situation, I would I would hate, like we haven't really had much of a discussion whether we think that is. Right. or any discussion whether we think that's a good, good idea, idea. Right. so i would re i kind of feel like we need to have some general Overview. oh yeah general sense of yeah this is a direction we want to go before you you and vanessa spend a lot of time hammering out all the details well right. do you want to put it on the next agenda just as a draft the whatever they've come up with and then we can well let's i don't want to put a time frame on this because right. this is a you know, to, to establish a procedure like this, whether it's a task force or an advisory committee, requires <clears throat> considerable thought and drafting before the board gets a document. Mm -hmm. And I so I can concur with you, Peg, because this this came up late in the game at the uh, 
at right, the last Right, so meeting. I'm just saying that I think maybe before the draft gets, you know, before you get working deeply on a draft, that we That's see fine. what our intent, you know, do okay. we, are we kind of generally behind this well, concept? Well, that sounds like a work session idea, yeah. uh, discussion anyway, so maybe we'll just just table it until we have a chance to, to, to go there. Okay. Um, uh, and I know Vanessa put some information together, but it might be helpful to have a, a little bit of work go into what the suggestion would be or what a suggestion could be as to what that committee might or that group might look like if it without spending a lot of time just saying we think these are the values in it but right. may, but Do that's already sort of been committee? done exactly Do right. Right. You know, like, is this the right form to get this task done right. the, the other thing that i'm aware of is that there are towns in which this happens at a community level much more than at a town level i think that's and where that, the task force might be coming. might be worth yeah, thinking right. about yeah so um, before we really do anything we ought to have a board discussion. Another discussion, yeah. yeah. And okay. It sounds like that's a, like probably a work session okay. discussion. Um, that's where I was going with that. Yeah. So we spent two hours in our last meeting talking about that committee. Two hours. I didn't realize it was that long. Yes. So anything like that, I recommend the board do it in a work session. Yeah. Because it's already like 20 after 8 now. Yep. Getting a little cold. Yeah. But the heat, the heat, the heat shuts, shuts off at eight, everybody. We gotta go. So it's um, because, yeah, we had a lengthy discussion last meeting. Well, I, may, I remember her making a presentation. Okay. And, you know, I think it's important, but I, I, like Peg said, you know, before you start spending hours on it, whether we even want it. Right. Well, I'll, I'll pass that along to Vanessa, so just just show, just so she knows where we are. Yeah. 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 It's on the radar, but it's not imminent. It's just right. 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 I mean, it's yeah. Um, okay. Are there other closing comments? Other business? Uh, any comments online? Um, there's nobody. No public in the room. I went to a very interesting tree warden group meeting last night. Oh, so that's great. That's all you say. Okay, cool. Oh, but there are opportunities for us. Okay, cool. I do have a candidate to for the tree warden okay. position. All right. I did get an email. Oh. So I will, it'll be on the agenda. Great. Next meeting. Okay. Twenty okay. second. Great. I'm glad so. we have another candidate. That's good. All right. Is there other closing comments? Other business? Is that Josh's last select board meeting or town no, meeting? No, I think there's one more. Are there two? Right. You're not like counting them or anything, are you? <laughs> there's one more, and then there will be the special meeting, the informative meeting, and informational. No, we're not doing. We're not going to do one at all. We don't have to. The only thing. We, we, right, but we, we often have, have we, a we little bit of sort past. of a forum. I guess we yeah. haven't really. We haven't talked about that having an informational before town meeting. Are we I know that Putney has done that in the past. We've always done that. I mean, it could be part. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm, the I'm last. Confused thing. by that because I mean, well, an opportunity for people to, to ask questions. Yeah, it's just to put it on. I mean, it doesn't have to be a people formal, don't necessarily formal show hearing. Up. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. No, it's just an information. It's session, just a, just to put it up. Just we can put it on the last agenda before the town meeting. Yeah, and then it'll, it probably won't take long, right? Because the only thing on the ballot really is um, officers. Um, yeah. Town reports will be out. I mean, yeah. we're not going to have a discussion on the budget. <laughs> no. Sorry, okay, so I'm yawning now, so definitely time to go. All right. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? Well, do, you, do we need you have an executive session listed here? Do you no, need I mean, it? We struck it. We struck okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely um, not now. Okay, so so before, so we have a, do we have a second People on the motion to adjourn? Before <laughs> okay. Sorry. Jeez, before, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it will be in five minutes. Um, so before we adjourn, the next meeting the next meeting is February twenty second, twenty twenty three. For the regular 
select board meeting. Right. Oh, February I'm sorry. The, the February 13th is a special joint right. meeting between right. for okay. the um, planning commission and the select board for the sidewalk study. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.